Hello, folks. <clears throat> Welcome to the Dateland <laughs> podcast. Uh, want to stay more hydrated? Uh, you need a little more oomph than water. I need that. Grab your liquid IV in bulk nationwide at Costco, or you can get 15% off when you go to liquidiv.com and use code NATE at checkout. That's 15% off anything you order when you shop better hydration today using promo code NATE at liquidiv.com. Price Picks is the easiest and fastest way to play daily fantasy sports. Download the, download the Prize Picks apps or go to prizepicks.com to sign up and play daily fantasy sports. First time users can receive a 100% instant deposit match up to $100 with promo code NATE. If you deposit $100, Prize Picks will give you $100. If you deposit $50, Prize Picks will give you $50. You guys get that? Yeah. yeah All right. Yeah. <laughs> if you do 10, they'll do 10. You got it? All right. Don't forget to enter promo code NATE and sign up for an instant deposit match up to $100. Mizzen and Maine dress up with ease. Any other dress shirt just won't feel as good. They combine the comfort and flexibility of your favorite athletic wear with the fit and style of a custom dress shirt. So if you want the best dress shirts money can buy, check out Mizzen and Maine right now. If you go to MizzenandMaine.com and use promo code Nate, you'll receive $35 off any regular price order of $125 or more. That is $35 off when you go to M I Z Z E N A N D. M A I N dot com and use our promo code Nate. All right. Thank you to our sponsor, Beard Club. Beard Club delivers quality and consumables. Oh, quality, <laughs> quality hardware and consumables that'll help you get a better, thicker, and fuller looking beard. Grow your best beard today and take 20% off your first order when you go to beardclub.com slash Nate and use code Nate. That's beardclub.com slash Nate, code Nate, for 20% off your first order. I've not read anything all weekend, I don't think. <laughs> you forgot. <Yeah. laughs> I forgot how to read. All right. <clears throat> Here we go. Hello, folks. Hey, Bear. Uh, I had this. This morning, because uh, you're going to read the Beard Club, and I was at Laura says, "Does this, does he have a beard?" That's how much I'm out of it. Wow! And uh, for some reason, I was picturing like not much of a beard. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well. And then, you, I mean, but then I looked at you right now, and I was like, "Yeah, it's a lot of beard." Well, I can't criticize my own beard after reading BeardClub.com. But <laughs> well, it's uh, going to get in better shape. It is going to get in better shape. But uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, but I should know you have a beard. I don't know. I, that's I'm true. saying that's I was kind of out of the. Out of the, I slept till I slept forever today. I was out of it. Yeah, my voice is not. If it's yeah, hopefully it sounds okay enough. To, uh, but it was like yeah, Arizona air. I think just got to me. Well, you had a big weekend too. I had a big weekend. What happened? Uh, <laughs> they. I don't know. I can't even think of a joke. I don't know, <laughs> this one's good. <laughs> so we did. Uh, I shot my special. Uh. Uh. I might have a title for it. I don't know. Do we already get, we get a bunch of titles? We did. Yeah. Were they good? Any of them good? A lot of hay bears. Yeah. Oh, boy. Let's go, folks. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Civilian station. Civilian Very station. creative. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I got an idea. How about hay bear? Yeah. <laughs> Thought of that one? Uh, we, uh, uh, yeah. So anyway, I shot that special. So I shot the special. We went awesome. Phoenix is awesome. Uh, doing it in the round was great. Uh, it was. It was. Man, it, look at that. Yeah, it was. It was. It was very, very cool. We had. They did some. Uh, you know, uh, the the way they did it, the 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 stage looks so good. Uh, it's. I don't. I don't know. The top had like these lights that were over me. Like the, we had this overhead shot that I think will be shown and. It, it was just, it was super cool. The crowd was so great. Uh, supposedly, I don't know for sure, but someone told me afterwards that I think that there could have been a fight that broke out. You know, I got an <clears throat> email this morning from someone who said, was it the late show? Yeah. They apologized because they said um, his wife, uh, her hair, I guess, was hanging over the seat, the yeah. guy behind him, and the guy put his knee on her hair. Like, you know, to pin it against the chair. Yeah. And they got into a, uh, not a fist fight, but they got in a big argument. Yeah. Is that what 
Yeah, that's what I heard. Yeah, well, he emailed us and apologized. Oh, that guy did. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. See, Arizona's wild. Yeah, it is wild. Out yeah, there. it was dusty. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> that's uh, yeah. That uh, that's very nice though to email, and I'm sure both of them are not. That's what. That's awesome. Yeah. Even you know, I I, I I hate that something like that happened, but it was real quick. It was. I didn't have. To, it was quick enough that I didn't have to. There was, I didn't have to address it. Mm-hmm. I just kind of heard it. I just heard like a loud something, and then. Uh, and then it was it was over. And then I just I kind of heard it, but it was enough that I was not you know long enough that I was like I just kind of kept going. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's so crazy. That's exactly what I heard happen. So that's very. Well, tell them. It's you know, all, it's all right. It's also weird to have to be like, hey, could you get your hair out off of me? <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, like, she's saying that they pinned her hair behind. Right, but it was dangling all behind. Well, if you have long hair, so you take that guy's side. Yeah, yeah, I'm like, yeah. Can you maybe get your hair under control? Yeah, but I mean, I, I don't. I wasn't there. But he said the only reason it's touching the guy is because the guy's taking his knee and pinning it against the back of her chair. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's it's yeah. It's it's one of the. It's like the seat in the airplane when they push it back. It's you can either you just deal with it and be annoyed with it, which is how I would handle it. Probably a lot of people handle it. Or you can hit the seat. <laughs> and so it's it's going to be, that's how you're going to handle it. And the one emailing seems to be the one with the hair. So the other guy didn't email and say anything. Uh, so maybe we need to hear from him. Right yeah. now I'm on team hair. Yeah. So so the, the guy who got mad about, he's the one who had the wife with the hair. Yeah. He's the one that emailed. Yeah. 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 She's going to show up. They should go to another outing and sit in front of that guy. She shaved her head. She goes, does this make you happy now? <laughs> and then they get. So I sat in the second show. I watched the whole thing. It was awesome to just Thanks. sit in the crowd and yeah. watch. And I had a real out-of-character moment. The guy in front of me, he every joke you did, he would turn to his side and be like, That's, I would do that. Yeah. Like relating to all your jokes, but in an annoying way. Yeah. And I had a really out of character moment. I leaned forward, I grabbed the dude on the shoulder, and I go, "Enough!" Whoa! Wow! And Maybe it, that's what you heard. It Maybe felt, that it felt awesome. Did wow. his but, wife have long hair? Yeah, <laughs> Aaron. Is this what we're getting to? It was I, you. I said enough, dude. And yeah. then I leaned back and I thought about the whole show. You know, yeah. Right when the show ended, I go, "Hey, sorry about that, man." He was like, "No, it's fine." I he, told he you, Arizona's wild. Yeah, it's but, too hot. It's just too hot out there. And there's not enough humidity. You need some. <laughs> but I've I never lo- confronted anybody in a yeah. moment like that. Do you think that felt- guy even knew what you meant by enough? <laughs> I don't oh, think he, I know. He yeah. heard the tone of my voice. <laughs> he knew what was going on. He knew he was misbehaving. So he's relating to Nate's comedy and having a good time, and you <laughs> told him to stop. But, but uh, you know, thousands of other people were doing that without – conversing yeah. about it right after the joke. Uh, we needed you in the audience of the shows we did in Arizona. <laughs> yeah, yeah, probably. <laughs> there, uh, I would like, I had Aaron walk around just, <laughs> if, if people, and they laugh too how, loud, not high enough. Right. He just he would just keep them kind of at bay. If they weren't really laughing, he's like, not enough. Not enough. Not up, enough. Up, <laughs> up, up, up. And then if they, and if they started laughing too loud, I go, what are we doing? Aaron and if just their grabs ha- his shoulder. Hey, what are we doing? And if their hair was That's too enough. long, he would just pin it to the chair. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was a menace just walking, just walking around. around. <laughs> Measuring, putting their hands down to make sure their dresses went far enough down. Because Not enough. Not yeah. enough. Hey, you dressed in shorts. Hope you enjoy the back row. Get her back <laughs> there. Get her back there. Uh, no, I look, I get it. Yeah. It's it, people, it's uh, that's always tough. That people are excited, people get you know, it's hard to say. It is nice, it's yeah. like just laugh. Like, I know, yeah, it's you're caught up in the moment, and it's like, I understand it, but always remember, you might have Aaron sitting behind you. I can't even enjoy shows though anymore, like in the crowd, because everything people do irritate me, mm-hmm. like when I'm in the audience, yeah. That I just, that's what I want to do. I saw a show, I saw Todd Snyder at the Ryman this weekend and people were yelling out requests and things. And I just, I just want them all to be quiet. I can't even, people were talking to each other in the front row, probably not even bothering the show. Mm. And it just, it was bothering me. It was ruining <laughs> yeah. the experience for me. Yeah. Yeah. It's tough. I mean, you know, P- yeah, I don't know. People get excited and it's like, uh, they do it, but Aaron handles it for us. <laughs> yeah. And uh, enough. 
Enough. I love that. <laughs> Enough. Wow. I've never spoken like that ever. It just came out, man. Do you think the did he listen to podcast or this guy didn't know who I was? Yeah. No, I was just a weird dude behind God. it. That that that's the big risk. Yeah. Is there's a great chance a ton of people in that room know who you are. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the that's the risk you took. That's more than even being conversation. You're doing it. That's like doing it at like a family reunion where you're like, right. you know, you're like, I don't know everybody. Imagine, Not everybody knows me, but there's a great chance. Imagine that guy listens to the podcast for the first time after the special. Yeah. And here's this moment. And he goes, you're that guy. He's like, I've been looking for that guy. Yeah. No, I hope he's learned a lesson. <laughs> 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 Found him. I love Overall, this. everybody, it, look, it was, it was an awesome it was, night. It was awesome, man. I was glad you there. Met all the Webbers. Yeah, uh, which was very fun. It's a lot. It's a lot. It was a lot, but they were they were all super cool. And uh, uh, I always think I was always because you know I joke around. You know I don't want to be mad, but they're all they love it. Yeah, and uh, they got robbed immediately, <laughs> <laughs> and <clears throat> they don't know how to handle them. I was yelling that as they walked away down a sketchy street. <laughs> I said, this group right here. <laughs> They've never uh, been on a street like this before. <laughs> <laughs> but they, uh, yeah, the whole night was great. The show went great. Uh, you know, we, we uh, trying to think, I mean, yeah, my voice is like this. It was like my voice started because I was there for like nine days. And it was just that dry air starts hitting you. <clears throat> and then, so I think it takes your, it was like towards the end. And just the amount of just like everything going on. It was just a lot. But uh, we hung out, kept it kind of calm with Albuquerque. Albuquerque was great uh, the night before. I did. I ended up doing like 67 minutes and 70 minutes on both shows, which I was very excited about. So the pacing was very good. Uh, I liked around. I liked walking around. Uh, <clears throat> we had some fun stuff. You know, there's like little, little things you see, like, you know, in the opening. And I, I get handed a microphone by somebody. Uh, and it's, it's, but this somebody's, you know, you're, you might not recognize it first, but then you will, uh, not famous, just my family. But then, uh, yeah, the whole, I don't know. The whole thing was awesome. And it's, and then today, I think yesterday on the flight home, I was like writing down, all right, going through some jokes that I told as we were building this hour and like trying to write some of them down to be like, all right, what do I have that's not on this hour? This morning I woke up with like. A panic, I just like I don't know. Like, what are you going to talk about? Because we're about to announce some of the 2023 tour, and it's going to be a big tour and a big year. And uh, <clears throat> so when we announce it, uh, I like I was just like, golly, because it's got to be all new material. And you're like, what on earth? Did you feel this way after the last one too? Yeah, yeah. The last one, you it just. Maybe I felt more excited. Like the last one, I felt the same way, and it all just kind of came to who I went to Huntsville, went to some clubs. But I mean, I gotta go. Like I'm about to go pop down Zanies and like mm -hmm. and like I mean, but I'm on tour, so it's like I'll just from here to the end of the year, we'll be just trying to like filter out, you know, like getting that in between. I looked at like because I went to Phoenix to stand up live, uh, also before the start of the last tour just to work on like my new hour. And I, and I was looking at that note card <clears throat> and I was still doing like a lot of stuff from the greatest average American, but I don't think the greatest average American was out yet, but I was still, I still had a lot of stuff and, but it, but it was like, just to see that I looked at that card to then look at, I mean, this hour is like pretty different. There was, there were some jokes that were still that are in there, but it wasn't, I mean, they're very different now. Mm -hmm. But it's just like, what are you gonna talk? About? I don't, you know. I guess you just figure it out. Yeah, you always do. Yeah, it's brutal though. It's not brutal. It's just, I mean, it's exciting, but it's just like, oh gosh, mm -hmm. what on earth? Yeah, I mean, you know, you just gotta. Yeah, it is keep hard. On, keep yeah, it on, right. Uh, yeah, you gotta. <laughs> yeah. Hey, just say things, and then I don't know. It is wild though to just think about the idea that you like come up with new jokes. Right, you have all these jokes. You're like, "Oh, this is a good joke," and then you think, "Oh, this like at par par parts of my life, I would think, oh, this is the best joke I'm ever going to write." Yeah, and then you you write more jokes, and you're like, "Oh, I don't even like that joke." Anymore. Yeah. The joke that I thought was the best joke I ever wrote, I don't even like. Yeah, 
Yeah. It's amazing how it happens. Yeah, it's <clears throat> there's no rhyme or reason to it. And there's no formula. I mean, if you're like a joke writer, there's a formula. If you're one liners or if you're there's gotta be somewhat of uh you still gotta come up with the ideas. But yeah, it's yeah, because you got to, I mean, you figure it out on your own. You know, no one, you know, I, I mean, I don't really know comics that have writers, but uh, I'm sure, I know some do. But yeah, when you got to do it on your own, you're like, yeah, I don't know. What, what am I going to do? Uh, all right. Uh, we'll figure it out. It's going to be great. Yeah. My you name, uh, I've, I meant to have a picture. Uh, I don't have my phone. I had a uh, the the badge that we had for backstage. My name was misspelled. <laughs> was it really? Yeah, yeah. That's you gotta love that. It doesn't. It just doesn't matter. <laughs> that's great. It never matters. It was B A R T A Z E or something. Like just like all right. <laughs> yeah, all right. I'm only I'm only recording a special here. Yeah, no big deal. Yeah, yeah. Try to get it right on the editing, I guess. Right, <laughs> that's all you can hope. For. <laughs> yeah, I watched. Yeah, I mean, because we had jo- uh, Carlin, George Carlin, and Louis C.K. did a special there, which we wa- I watched those two this weekend. It was it was it was kind of surreal. Mm. Not that I'm doing it for that reason or whatever. I'm just it was it is crazy to be like golly, and I, and Segur I think is about the same special there too. So we'll see. Uh, <clears throat> I'll let you know where it's going to come out. I do know. Uh, I can't. I don't think I can say yet. I'll find out when I can say it, and I'll tell y'all. Hoping to be coming out in January, uh, and so yeah. Start the year exciting, off hot. Man. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> uh, all right. Did y'all have anything you're supposed to uh, regarding this weekend? Or I think it's going to segue nice into these okay. comments. Oh, they're, perfect. They're about your special. All right. Grayson Allen. Ooh. Sounds like Duke a country basketball singer. player. Duke basketball player. Oh, okay, I yeah, he'd be the singer. one that definitely get in the fight. And that's what he does. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we had tickets to this weekend's tapings of the special in Phoenix. <clears throat> On our way there, we got a call from our babysitter that our house was flooding, so we had to turn around and go back. As a consolation, I suggested we listen to this week's podcast and at least get in the mood. My wife, who has never seen Nate perform stand up, said. This is who we were going to see. <laughs> I laughed out loud and explained the live act is wildly better than the podcast, <laughs> although I love the podcast. Thanks for giving us a good laugh, as always. <clears throat> That's very funny. She's like, man, thank God the, the house flooded. <laughs> Sounds yeah. like she set it really up. dodged a bullet there, huh? <laughs> she might have set it up. Yeah. <laughs> Michelle Caulfield, Caulfield. We got to the theater early, so we had a time to get to our seats well before the show started. A few minutes after we sat down, a couple sat down behind us. All of a, all of this sudden, I heard the man saying Nate Bar Gates over and over again. I realized he was trying to do a voice search on his phone to look up who Nate was, but because he was saying Nate Bar Gates, he wasn't getting any search results. Apparently, they had no idea who they were there to see. I did hear them laughing a lot, so despite apparently not knowing who Nate was, I think they had a great time. There you go. Maybe it was the uh, name tag that <laughs> yeah. was tripping him up. That is true. Yeah. You know? Or he was he thought you were related to Bill Gates. He thought this was a TED Talk of sorts. Oh. A Nate Bar yeah. Gates. Because how could he afford something like this? Well, obviously. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. He's in the Gates family. Yeah. Rick Peterson. They started filling seats up front for people that didn't show up. And Usher came up to the row that me and my son were sitting in, which was the last row. He said, hey, poor people, you want to come fill in some seats? Not the exact quote, but close. He did say poor people. (laughs) So we got to move down super close to the stage. Once we got seated, a guy from our row was like, did he just call us poor people? To which I responded, yes. And while it might seem rude, look look at where we are. Nate killed it, of course. Yeah, whoever – they were just being funny. Uh, it was Nate's brother. But if you're not yeah. poor, why are you buying such bad seats? That's you know true. what I mean? That's what I'm saying. If you got Gates money, you're, uh, you'll you be sitting up it. front. You know what I mean? Up front, maybe. Listen, I would have been back there with you, and uh, I'm the kind of poor that they would not even offer me the upfront seats. No. 
Yeah. They'll be like, the, this group of poor people, not, Even not in the, this yeah. group. You'd the, be a distraction in the special. Right. We're like, we don't want a lot. We don't want you in the video a lot. Yeah. They would ask you to get back to work. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hey, poor people, you want to move up front? And what are you doing? Yeah. Lunch break's over, bud. Shift's yeah. over, buddy. Ryan Peterson. Nate, my wife and I are coming to your show in Cedar Rapids. I was wondering if the show is going to be the same as your special. Can't wait to see you. Also, do you know who the opener is? Yeah, I mean, that's like next week or something, two weeks. <laughs> yeah, that will be the same. I'll probably throw one. I'm hopefully I have some new jokes. The rest of this year <clears throat> will be a lot of probably as close to that special. It's the January is when I'm looking forward to be switched over uh, to new. And worst case, you end up having to do some greatest hits at the end, which I might do anyway if people have seen the special just – you know, but, uh, oh, you know, yeah, Cedar Rapids, though. This reminds me of that guy at Aaron's show one time. Then you say a guy was like, when you guys coming back and you were like, I don't know, probably a year or so, got to write some new jokes. He goes, oh, don't tell me this stuff is made up. What yeah. does he say? He goes, oh, don't tell me y'all thought about that ahead of time. Yeah, I mean, like, like you're all just amazing improv geniuses. Okay, yeah, you think I'm the greatest comedian of all time? We all just riffed. For an hour and a half. Yeah. If you could riff, riff a pure act, the thing is, too, is I don't think people are giving you enough credit. Like, even that guy would be like, well, you should you should be bowing down to me if I could <laughs> if I could have an right. act together that I do differently every night that yeah. that's that tight. Yeah. There's just no way. Yeah. It's like people don't like putting an act together to where it's like becomes what it is, this presentable act. I mean, it's just, it takes forever i have no cards maybe one day would show i uh, i could show the phoenix the jokes i was doing in phoenix to the special mm -hmm. the from the first to the end to show you how you know different i wonder if people yeah it just changes to where people think you're even if they were at both shows they think it's different because it kind of is it's like the topic would be the same yeah but it's just the rhythm. Everything gets so much tighter, and mm -hmm. it gets presented in this perfect pack, you know, or as close to perfect package. And that's, and it takes a long time to do it. I wish I could write it like that, like that guy. Once, whew. yeah. I mean, <laughs> it's the, like, the, yeah, the, how expensive were these tickets? You think that you're seeing a guy that can just come out and just yeah. do it? You want to go, sir, if we could do that, <laughs> you wouldn't be this close to it. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> I can promise you, you would have been stopped by four to five people before you got this close to ask when we are coming back. <laughs> All right. So <clears throat> the Greg Garcia episode. Tim Meek, longtime caller, first time listener. Love it. <laughs> I think I get why Nick falls for Nate's made up stories. After opening with Aaron was a... What, Hold on. After opening with, Aaron was arrested for punching some dudes after Notre Dame's loss. Nate just moves on. I began Googling Aaron Weber, comedian, arrested. Long story short, Aaron wasn't arrested, and I was pulled over for being on my phone while driving through Atlanta. Wow. <laughs> Thanks for the laughs and the citation. Keep up the good work. Well, yeah, a lot you, of people. Got Tim. Lot it's of very people. nice of Tim to assume that uh, it would make the news. If I got arrested. Yeah, because yeah. that's true. <laughs> well, prior to this podcast, I thought that the statement was so absurd that no one would believe it. But now, yeah. after seeing how Aaron handles himself in a crowd, yeah. Uh, yeah. it's believable. It is. That's true. I was at the bar. These guys were making fun of Notre Dame. <laughs> <laughs> I grabbed him by the shoulder. I said, enough. Enough. <laughs> a lot of people believe. A lot of people said, "I could. we should give him another chance, but I could see him doing it. Yeah. <laughs> It's like uh, Costanza when he goes when he fights those people in the movie theater. Oh, that's uh, one of the final episodes, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, and he's yeah, yeah. He, it's like those guys are laughing, kicking his chair. Yeah, I would love it. Oh, that's the when he does everything opposite. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, <laughs> all right. Got to the bottom uh, of that. Yeah. Kevin Lawson, what an amazing guest. Greg is oozing with charm. He is someone that you immediately like. I love that his show were about giving back or fixing a wrong. Then to hear about his real life Burger King example of giving. Wow. What a great guy. Hopefully examples like that 
will keep his hell life much more comfortable. <laughs> Thanks for sitting this one out, Aaron. I agree with Kevin. It's like easy, Kevin. I think get yeah. Greg's married. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, when he goes to hell, I think, <laughs> yeah, when when uh, it's going to be much. I had a lot of people say this was our their favorite episode. And yeah. I'd say because of Greg, and they're like, yeah, sure. Yeah. That there was, you go. Yeah, that was why. It was definitely something. <laughs> I don't know, but I love that thin Aaron. That's uh, <laughs> say what Aaron thinks he looks like. Yeah, yeah. When Aaron looks in the mirror, a lot of people say Greg sounded like Aaron. He did sound a little bit like. Yeah, me. yeah. And people say I'm oozing with charm. I get that a lot too. Yeah, that's but true. Enough. <laughs> <laughs> that's charm. <laughs> Kate Smith. This is why we need Aaron around. You need a super genius to clear up the difference between nectarines and tangerines. Oh, thank you, Kate. Though I don't know if I'm the resident fruits and vegetables expert. Yeah, could on you the clear podcast. that up for us? Oh, uh, no, I can't. Well, nectarines aren't the, those are like the half peaches, right? Mm -hmm. oh, Dusty yeah. said they were mm -hmm. like tiny oranges, but those are. That's tangerines. a tangerine, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But we yeah. were talking about nectarines. Wow. Well. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, if you don't say nectarine and tangerine, you could see where that could be confused. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what is a nectarine? It's a small one? A small little peach? <laughs> it's like a peach. Like a plum. Like a plum and a peach. Oh, it's got a thing inside oh, of it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like a plum <laughs> and a peach, there. yeah. It's got a big thing inside Half of apple, <laughs> half I wouldn't peach. eat it. Is it half apple, half peach, or half plum? Half apple, half no. peach? That's what that is? <laughs> I don't think so. What's that nonsense in the middle? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's way more like a peach and a plum seed. What's in plum? the nectarine versus peach debate, the difference is, so this is a raging debate going wow. on right now. Yeah. God, I can't read a whole novel. They're, they're, just, nectarines just, are actually a type of peach, which makes it confusing to understand the difference between the two. Okay. Nectarines right. are smooth and have a slightly firmer texture than peaches. So it's it's like, it's a type of peach. I love a nectarine. <laughs> we didn't know what it was until right <laughs> well, now. Well, I mean, uh, no, I mean, now that it's cleared up, <laughs> I have had nectarines. Do you eat that core? No, no, you can't eat that core. What okay. is it like? A What's very hard, like a yeah. peach seed. I mean, you can crack it open and then eat the little seed inside of it. All right. That's just the cover. Yeah, it'd be tough to eat that that big seed. In the yeah, middle. you crack it open, eat the little seed inside. Okay. How did these come about? Like, that's the, you know. Yeah, how'd they get the apple and the peach get together and make a nectarine? They're yeah. breeding fruit. Yeah. Probably grafting. Yeah, we start messing around in these laboratories. Who, yeah. Who knows what's going Scientists. on. Scientists. Oh. You could take a little bit of a, you know, like a like a apple tree and probably graft on a peach limb. <laughs> and then, it, I mean, that that is a thing. They should have just called it a people. Yeah. <laughs> what if it's half? Yeah, a, a papple? Papple. No, I'm people. trying to. I think, people, the, yeah. I think the peach deserves a little more. Oh, I see. P e a. Yeah. P p e l e. Yeah. People. Like if you're gonna combine them, and you just did papple. The peach could be like. I mean, I'm not barely even a part of it. Right. That's that's fair. And so you go people. I'll take a people. Well, like half <laughs> peach. Half apple. <laughs> Have you seen these these square watermelons that people make? Uh, cube watermelons? No, I'm not a big watermelon guy. Oh. Are you okay with people manipulating the genetics of the, the, this fruit to make it easier to ship? Oh, I think that's it. what they're doing. How are they doing that? I don't know. They've just manipulated the uh, the DNA of that seed. I can't even get a watermelon to grow, and they're making them squares. It's amazing. Would they make it? Would it just when it grows? Do they just put a square thing around it? That's probably what they're doing. Yeah. So they're they not doing. A, it's not a science experience. Well, that's stuff. That's science. Yeah, that's enough. Uh, there. <laughs> and I give you such a weapon to use. Just enough, <laughs> yeah, enough. It would shut me down. Yeah. Anytime. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, <clears throat> David Beale, in reference to the movie Catch Me If You Can, while the rest of us are wondering <laughs> who is Frank Abing Abingnell. And is he still alive? Dusty straight up types Leonardo DiCaprio into Google search bar. Listen, let's be fair. I don't think he's still alive. Is he out? Like he's out. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, is that it? Oh, it's Leonardo DiCaprio. <laughs> <laughs> 
So, Dusty, you do realize those are actors, right? Uh, listen, I had no business <laughs> running the computer. <laughs> <laughs> so funny. It's funny to see the tabs you have pulled up, too. Was Robin Hood real? <laughs> And then Escape from Alcatraz, the movie. <laughs> I was doing my best here. <laughs> You're holding it down, man. <laughs> uh, that's so funny. <laughs> also, Harper had this. Uh, I grabbed it. This is the name misspelled. Can you see it? Nate Bart Gaze. You know, the funny thing, in that picture, you got quite a gaze going on. I do. And you're like, Nate Bart gaze. I think they, that's on purpose. Yeah. I mean. Yeah. They knew what they were doing. <laughs> <laughs> they knew what they were doing. I saw people wearing that. I didn't notice it was spelled that badly. Yeah. Oh, man. So what was the guy saying? Uh, we are moving near Arizona. Sorry. Bar, Bar Gates. Gates. Bar Gates. Yeah. Oh, so Bar Gates is not far off. Yeah. All yeah. right. Okay. Putting it all together. Yeah. All right. Well, a little tea. I don't ever drink tea. I love tea. I'm a big tea guy. Are yeah. You? yeah. How big at the Opry, that throat coat? Throat coat's good. Throat coat. Peppermint, ginger. I like ginger for the stomach, peppermint for the voice. It feels very like <clears throat> tea's always, I always take it as like very like, what is it? Mm. Like uh, high, highfalutin. Highfalutin. Yeah. Oh, it could go, I think it'd go highfalutin or hi- very hippie. Yeah. I don't think hippie. I always think high food. Like if someone's like, "Oh, I'll take a tea at a table," you're like, "Here we go." <laughs> oh yeah, like not iced tea. Yeah, right. like, I mean, I would just think you're talking about sweet tea. But when someone asks for a hot tea, you're like, "Oh, you're from England?" It feels, yeah, it's like <laughs> when I worked in a restaurant, it. nothing infuriated <clears throat> me more than a customer asking for a hot tea. Yeah, I'm like, "Oh, now I got to find a bag. I got to find a spoon. I got to mm. get a cup." It's a lot goes into it. That's about it. Though, yeah. Huh? yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's about it. <laughs> but it's like, but spoons. when you're doing it at Olive Garden, it's like, come on, what are we doing? <laughs> right, right. You really? I would have hot it at Applebee's right now. You got to someone that asks for a hot tea, and you're like, yeah, I'm gonna, I gotta go brush the dust off the thing. Yeah, like we're not drinking hot teas in here. Yeah, it's 90 degrees outside. Just put yeah. a sweet tea in the microwave. And yeah. Give it to him. Oh yeah. That's what I would do. Yeah, that's the only thing that I don't. I don't think I ever drink them because of that. Because I feel like. I I'm, I'm not totally agree. Anybody. If you grow up in the South, I feel like that would be like, what? Who yeah. Are, who do You're you like, think I'm you not are? trying to be bearing anybody, man. I'll take, you know. However you serve the tea. Right? I'll take it however. No, I would just say, I, if they said hot, I would say, well, I don't belong in here. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's what I would think. Uh, <clears throat> all right. <laughs> Right? Arizona episode comments. No, I apologize. It's been uh, Sarah Shallow. I am shocked that y'all didn't talk about Travis Walton in the Arizona episode, considering UFOs come up quite a bit on this podcast. Travis Walton claims to have been abduct- abducted by aliens in Snowflake, Arizona, November 5th, 1975. Yeah, so I didn't know it was Arizona, but I saw that movie. Uh, there was a movie about it, Fire in the Sky. Mm. And uh, there were some loggers, and and they saw at the end of their shift a bright light, and he got out of his truck and went, and it sucked him up to the spaceship, and he was missing for a few days, and his buddies they thought had killed him, and they were being investigated, and then he just shows up and says that aliens abducted him, and I believe him if you look at him. He looks like he's seen some stuff. Yeah. He was on Rogan recently and told the story. Um, oh. But. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That'd be interesting. It's a crazy story. Yeah. Look where he yeah. reappeared. Hey Bear, Arizona. Hey Bear, Arizona. <laughs> wow. All hey right. Bear. That's crazy. <clears throat> that is crazy. Uh, all right. I love that he's got so casually just got a little alien mannequin down there with a hat on it. Yeah. He goes out of those conventions now. What does he say? Like, they just took him up and looked at him? Yeah, they... uh looked like a guy that met them all. How you doing? He yeah, their, right, right. He shook their hand. <laughs> he fought them, actually. <clears throat> How you doing, Travis Walton? <laughs> <laughs> Walton family. And they're like, Got a, uh, hi. <laughs> yeah, I'm uh, part of the Walmart Waltons. Yeah. <laughs> Walton. You guys have any hot tea up here? <laughs> <laughs> they go, we don't drink anything. <laughs> Walton claimed that he awoke in a hospital-like room being observed by three short, bald creatures. He claimed he fought with them until a human wearing a helmet led Walton to another room where he blacked out as three other humans put a clear plastic mask over his face. I don't remember There's a whole lot of details. There, huh? He fought with another human, a traitor. 
to the human race. Wow. I you think know? in the movie he fights with mm. the alien, like kicks him or something. I don't think they have other humans up there. Yeah. <clears throat> so the movie's not exactly right. Apparently not. Okay. <laughs> Took a little okay. creative liberties up there. <laughs> yeah. How you doing, Travis Walton? <laughs> <laughs> Just going around eating. How you doing, Travis Walton? The guys, the aliens, like, believe ye. Like, I didn't know the name. <laughs> but like, yeah, he's like, what? Am I saying that right? Blacker. <laughs> Blacker. 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 Yeah, Travis Walton. <laughs> Says all his buddies took a polygraph test and all passed. So there you go. T bone. I'm T bone. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> okay. I guess the logging career was kind of tough after that, I would imagine. Yeah. He was sick of logging, so he was like, I'll go on the spaceship and tour the country. Yeah. Tour the world. Universe. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Michael Williams. I'm used to hearing Nate mispronounce all kinds of words, but hearing breakfast murder. Lake Havasaw and Gila Monster was pretty rough. Yeah, I had you read that, so now we both murdered it. Uh, Gila is Gila Monster, apparently. Gila. Yeah. A lot of people call me out on that one. How are we supposed to know that? Yeah, I like Gila Monster better. Mm -hmm. So I think that, yeah, I mean, that's how we say it. And Havasu is Gavasu. (laughs) Yeah, I don't know about that one. Havasu. Yeah, it sounds like you did it right. Okay. Havasu. And I guess I said the Gila monster was poisonous, and uh, our reptile expert, Jesse Rothacker, said they're not poisonous, they're venomous, and there's a difference, which I did not know. Yeah. What's the difference? I still don't know. One's just annoying. <laughs> I think venom, I mean, he said it was injected. Poison. He said it would hurt very bad, but it's not poisonous. Oh. So still not would not be. It, he doesn't you know, recommend getting bit. On my, uh, je- well, it's like venomous is. I don't know if I'm right, but venomous is. I think what they inject, so they put venom into you, like a snake, like a poisonous dart frog. Is like if you touch them, they have poison. Oh, on them. okay. But that being said, <clears throat> when I did my joke, uh, when I did the Cape Fear Serpentarium joke, I say venomous snake on. For re- I, I said poisonous before that, and someone said something to me once after a show, and so I changed it to venomous. Mm. Just so, because it was like you're just trying to not. I don't want someone to get hung up on. Yeah, me. get out of the moment. Yeah, right. Yeah. Have you ever heard of Cunningham's law? A couple times. <laughs> <laughs> Cunningham's the guy who invented Wikipedia, and he said the quickest re- the quickest way on the internet. To find the right answer to something is not to ask a question. It's to say the wrong answer. And people are more willing to correct you than they are to just answer a question. Oh, wow. It happens faster. So They can't wait to correct you. That's they for can't sure. wait. They, they love wait. it. So anytime we get something wrong on this podcast, it's just know, like, you're welcome. Yeah. Because we're getting the answers quickly. That's and good. Then, yeah. We'll get the answer to this next week. Yeah. Don't something tell to us. Keep in mind. Yeah. yeah. Mm. And we appreciate Cunningham coming up with that. Yeah. Why didn't he use <laughs> how did he find out Wikipedia as a name? I don't know. That's kind of like you're like, what? I thought the guy that invented his last name would have been Wikipedia. <laughs> John Wikipedia. At you least know. Wicca. Wicca. Well, yeah, yeah. yeah, the Pedia part I get, I guess, like encyclopedia. Yeah. And wiki, doesn't mm. that mean wiki is a term for the software where where users can contribute? There you go there. You know? So it was Wikipedia. And who knows if that's true? We'll find out in the comments this week. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. All right. Does hot tea ever cool down? Or is it just stay <laughs> the rest of your life? At night when the sun goes down. Yeah. I mean, hot tea, someone makes it. You you really, it's like, all right, go watch a movie and come back. And then you'll be able to sip on it. <laughs> <laughs> Heather Kaufman, when Nate used the sentence John saw a boob yesterday for describing uh haboob my boys ages nine and ten lost their minds <laughs> and have repeated that sentence daily thanks for giving my boys material to make them cool with their friends and in trouble with their sunday school teachers love the podcast all right thank you <clears throat> that's what we're doing yeah making kids laugh that's what it's all and, about and making them cool yeah. yeah that's what you want to do make the kids cool yep get them in trouble in sunday school <clears throat> all right Heather Hirsch, 
Here's another fun fact about McDonald's in Arizona. The McDonald's in Sedona is the only one in the world with turquoise arches. It was required to keep with the land of required by the town of Sedona to keep with the landscape requirement. Oh, look at that. Wow. Did you uh, do a McDonald's while you're out there? <clears throat> I'm going to eat McDonald's tonight because I'm going to go back to eating good. Uh, we did, I had pizza afterwards, what a burger, uh, ice cream, ice cream cake, ton of candy. Then the whole Sunday cheat day we had, it was like everybody came over. <clears throat> I had so much candy. I got, I, I got nauseous. <laughs> we had a Sunday bar. Uh, but I got, I got real nauseous and, uh, it your, was, your body couldn't handle it. Yeah. It was like just too much candy. And yeah. like, I mean, it's like 10 30. I like had to lay down and I just kind of rested and then I ate some candy. And then last night I ate some before I went to bed <clears throat> and I, I was like, why am I, I, I got real nauseous again. So I usually do a McDonald's, big McDonald's meal. It's like kind of a send off back into like a last supper, a last supper. <laughs> yeah. You know how many times I've told myself that? Yeah. yeah. I'm going to get after it tonight. Tomorrow, yeah. I'm a new man. Yeah. I think yeah. any good addiction is like that. You're like, this is the last time. <laughs> yeah. This is it. Well, once I've been able to handle it, like now, like Laura's going to make hella fresh tonight. And I was like, no. <laughs> I go, that's like a normal meal. I was yeah. like, I'm going to McDonald's. And I'm going to go like, because I could have got it last night, but by the time I landed, it was like, you know, I don't want to go at 10 o'clock and run the risk of it being bad. Right. I need to go, you know, din dinner time. Get fresh McDonald's. Get fresh McDonald's. Prime hours. Yeah. Prime hours. Yeah. I need the shift. I need the A shift. To be when there. the employees are still <laughs> caring about yeah. it. The best of the best. Yeah. The best of the best. Ice cream machine still working. Yeah. 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 I might Manager go by. still on duty. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> I'll probably go try to run by Dairy Queen maybe or something. I'll really get after it. I but I want to stay in shape. I, I will. Uh, or I'm, we one day we're, we we can talk. I think I've talked briefly about it. People ask about me losing weight, uh, and I'm gonna I, I'm gonna I'll talk about it in something just to tell you what I did. Uh, I I don't even talk about it right now. In my I, voice like this. But. I'd like to mention this McDonald's thing though. It seems like they went to great effort to do the green arch, but then they have a flag higher than the McDonald's <laughs> itself with the yellow arch. Mm -hmm. I mean, come on. It's like McDonald's is like, yeah, 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 we'll do what you're talking about, but we're also going to get our yellow arches in here too. Yeah. I want, well, I wonder if people were like, is this McDonald's? Yeah. Even the do not enter sense turquoise. Yeah. Maybe they thought people would not think that's McDonald's. Yeah. And maybe they didn't. I don't know. Maybe it's for night when the lights are on. But I just think that, that the Sedona is like, no, you can't have the yellow arches. And they're like, okay, no problem. But then they still have yellow we'll arches. throw that flag up yeah. still. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All, All right. right. Guys, I did some liquid IV this morning. Oh, man. I didn't I pass it on, by the way. It's, I can't. My voice is. <clears throat> I'm going to drink liquid IV as he's doing this. Mm -hmm. It says uh, I've been using liquid IV before workout. All right. That's not true. But I did have liquid IV this morning. And it's great for daily hydration maintenance. Uh, packets are easy to use, and they, uh, they're they ready to go when you need them. Concord Grape is Nate's favorite. <laughs> um, what it makes is it, my favorite. What makes it so effective? Cellular transport technology mm. designed to enhance rapid absorption of water and other key ingredients into the bloodstream. One packet of liquid IV and 16 ounces of water hydrates you two times faster and more efficiently than water alone. Um, to date, oh, liquid IV is also on a mission to change the world. For every purchase, they donate a serving to someone in need. To date, liquid IV has donated over 24 million, million servings globally. So grab your liquid IV in bulk nationwide at Costco or get 15% off when you go to liquidiv.com and use code Nate at checkout. That's 15% off anything you order when you shop Better Hydration today using promo code Nate at liquidiv.com. And um, prize picks, prize picks. I'm all into daily fantasy sports. Um, my fantasy team lost this weekend, unfortunately, but uh, the Titans won the first game. MTSU Blue Raiders took down 
Miami. How about that? Wow. All right. Miami. Yeah. University of Miami? Yeah. yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah, they were ranked 25th. It's the first time they've beaten a ranked team, so very excited about that. Big time. But uh, prize picks allows you to basically pick whether something's over or under. So, like, Derrick Henry, I think he ran for 85 yards this past Sunday. And this coming Sunday, you can pick, is he going to run over 85 yards or under 85 yards? I hope it's over. Um, but that's just one of the options you get. Cooper Cup. So they have him down to 0.5 touchdowns. Basically saying, is he going to score a touchdown or not? Right. You can just pick uh, over it or under it. No, I'm sorry, not over it, under it, more or less. He's going to get more yards or less yards. And you get it. So you pick two to totally. five players, and if they will go score more or less than the prize picks projections, you can win up to 10 times your money on any entry. Entries can be made in 60 seconds or less. It's that easy. Download the prize picks app or go to prizepicks.com to sign up and play daily fantasy sports. First-time users can receive a 100% instant deposit match up to $100 with promo code NATE. If you deposit $100, prize picks will give you $100. If you deposit $50, prize picks will give you $50. I think we got it. We got it. I always look at you guys because I'm doing somebody, I want to make sure. Don't forget to enter promo code NATE at sign up for an instant deposit match up to $100. We are loving Mizzen and Maine dress shirts. With how much we travel, how nice is it to have a shirt? You don't have to fold up. You don't have to iron. You don't have to spray with chemicals. You just ball it up, throw it in your suitcase. It'll come out looking neat, and you won't look messy on stage. And it's amazing not to have to go to the dry cleaner. Here's how the company started. Ten years ago, the founder of Mizzen and Maine was in D.C., and he saw a guy running through the town with sweat all over his shirt. Could have been me. And he was like, this shirt needs Enough. a refresh. <laughs> Enough. That's what he said. Where was so, he at? In Washington, D.C. Okay. All right. I might have been there. You know, That's what drove the Mizzen and Main founder to make the world's first performance fabric dress shirt. Ten years later, I mean, they have comfortable flannels, no-tuck shirts, performance polos, chinos, and more. All in the same performance fabric that they're famous for. They make really comfortable men's clothing. You need to try to believe They've got over 30,000 five-star reviews, so it's not just me talking. It's 29,999 other people talking, so you know it's great. So if you want the best dress shirts money can buy, check out Mizzen and Maine. Right now, if you go to MizzenandMaine.com and use promo code NATE, you'll receive $35 off any regular price order of $125 or more. That's $35 off when you go to M-I-Z-Z-E-N-A-N-D-M-A-I-N.com and use our promo code, Nate. All right, guys, it's no secret that women love beards, and we love growing them. I got to tell you, I did all right when I didn't have a beard with the ladies, but I did much better when I had a beard. And I didn't always think I could grow a beard. A guy I used to work with named Chaz, we were talk, selling pesticides and talking conspiracies. And he <laughs> encouraged me to let the beard grow. And if you don't have a good natural beard, you're going to need some help. And luckily, Beard Club is here to help. As a leader in beard first men's growth and grooming, Beard Club delivers quality products that will help you get a better, thicker, and fuller looking beard. Head to beardclub.com slash Nate, take the beard quiz, and use code Nate at checkout. They'll recommend a grooming kit that's tailored to your beard's needs. And they're all going to be different needs. The highlight of the grooming kit is the PT45 trimmer. It's a beard-changing device. There's no painful hair pulling. It's sturdy and has amazing battery life. Uh, this is the same. Tr- There's nothing worse than being somewhere and being like, I'm about to trim up the beard and the battery's dead. Uh, This is the same trimmer that NBA player James The Beard Harden uses. (laughs) He's also an investor in the company, by the way. (laughs) The growth kit features sprays to strengthen and moisturize your beard hair, oils that prime follicles for optimal growth, and a derma roller that rejuvenates dormant hair follicles. No matter what type of beard you have, some people will say, uh, I got a summer beard. Summer here, summer there. You know what I mean? Ah. But no matter what type you have, Beard Club (laughs) has the perfect kit to fit your needs. Beard Club, over over 2 million beards served. 
Grow your best beard today. Take 20% off your first order when you go to beardclub.com slash Nate and use code Nate. That's beardclub.com slash Nate, code Nate, for 20% off your first order. Boom. Boom. (laughs) Jimmy Fallon's got a beard now. (laughs) Yeah. Yes, he does. Some are here. (laughs) Some are here. Some are there. Yeah. You know what I mean? (laughs) Some are beard. (laughs) Uh, So this week... We are talking gas stations. Boom. All right. Talking about gas stations. So if you guys, if you're going to go get air in your tire, where you, you're crying over here, Aaron. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. I'll be back soon. Dusty, if you're going to get air in your tire, where do you tell Hannah you're going to get it? I'm going to the gas station. Gas station. I'm going to run up here to the gas station. You ever station. say service station? Oh, no. No, no. I don't. Do you people know, say that to you? <laughs> <laughs> it feels like I would ask you where, if I saw you. And I needed a gas station. I would change it to when you walked up and go, do you know where the service station is? Yeah. I mean, I could get into that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I go, and I go, well, what kind of service are you looking for? Yeah. And then we could converse about it. I could get down mm-hmm. with a conversation like that. Mm-hmm. Some some people call them service stations. Um, in parts of Canada, they call them uh, gas bars. Oh, yeah. Gas bars. Going to go to the gas bar to get some gas. And then the rest of the English-speaking world, they call it petrol. So you go to a petrol station. Go to a petrol station. Yeah. I feel like I've heard that. That's what yeah. they say to you if they saw you drinking tea. Petrol? Yeah, they go, do you know where the petrol station is? And they sorry sorry about the queen. You know, that's what they'd say to you. Because they're like British, he's saying. Like, uh, hi. Because you're fancy. Oh, yeah. European. Yeah. Yeah. So, it's enough. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, most of us call it gas station. There is a difference between gas station and convenience store. Um, 7-Eleven, convenience store. Yeah. Convenience store also doesn't have to have gas. That's right. Uh, bodegas in, in New York City are technically convenience stores. And there's like 10,000 of them. If you live in New York City, you love to tell people that you're going to a bodega. Oh, That's yeah. what I've noticed. Yeah. It's a good name. Yeah, mm-hmm. it is a good It's a fun mm-hmm. word to say. Yeah. That you don't yeah. get to say in other cities. Mm-hmm. Yep. There are no bodegas in Nashville, right? We have a 7-Eleven bodega. Yeah, maybe downtown Nashville. Yeah. There's probably some bodegas down there. Some corner stores. Corner but, stores. Yeah, yeah don't, we don't have bodegas. Not like New York. But I mean, yeah, people, you go, when you're starting comedy, you have bodegas. I mean, you just lived out of one. You just go there and get everything. Yeah. So they're like convenience stores and gas stations are like squares and rectangles? Well, I mean, some gas stations aren't convenience stores. Some just sell gas. Very That's f- what I'm saying. Okay. So some gas stations are also convenience stores, mm. but not convenience stores are not. You say what? Now you know what it feels like to sit by, in front of Aaron at a show. That's how that guy felt. <laughs> he just told me enough. I think. Yeah, <laughs> I'm still recovering from Dusty's ad read. Give me a minute. I'll be back in a second. <laughs> well, I think when cars first were invented, from what I read, it was kind of like <laughs> from what you remember. Come on. <laughs> oh, he's back. He's back. Yeah. yeah. Quick come, come back. Um, it's kind of like what electric cars are now. When they're first getting started, they're still trying to figure out, well, how do you keep them running? And so they would like sell gas like at markets and stuff like that. You just go buy it in a can. And then finally, they open uh, actual gas station. The first one where you pull in and they pump it was in 1913 in Pittsburgh. Um, but at first, they were just trying to figure it out, kind of like <laughs> when take crack, it home. Cracker Barrel had charging stations here. You're like, yeah. just trying to figure oh, yeah. it out. Yeah, take it home. They don't yeah. have them anymore? No, they do, but I'm saying now there's a lot of places for charging stations, but it's for like years from now when everything's electric cars, they're going to be like, Cracker Barrel is one of the first places you could go? It just seems weird. Yeah. When when I was growing up, we had a place in my, where my dad lives called uh, Edge's Grocery Store, and it was Larry Edge who ran that. And it was yeah. like a real old wooden, uh, rundown looking place, but he had everything in there. We used to go get Bluebell ice cream. He had the gas pumps. We would just fill up the four wheeler. He had like meat that was just kind of sitting. I think it was bologna, just kind of sitting out that he would carve off a piece. He had some cheese and uh, pickled eggs, and it's sort of been in in, Lef- in Penton. Penton, Alabama. Okay. Um, and uh, it was great. Larry was always running the store. He was always hanging out in there. We had a little charge account. Permanently closed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's closed now. They got the gas pump still running, but uh, they got a the Penton, Penton grill is attached to it, though, and it's still open. You can go get some food back there. 
Well, good, that's good. Good patty melt back there. Looks like a lovely place. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the church is nearby too, the <clears throat> Penn Church of God there. And uh but um, you know, we had a charge account. You could just go up and be like, put it on the tab. Oh, I love that. Yeah. And that was a lot of fun. As a tourist in New York City, there was nothing more exciting to me than to go into that little bodega right around the corner from Letterman to see I forgot his name now, but the guy that Letterman always talked with. Yeah. Uh, he had a camera in his shop, and he would go to him. You know what I'm talking about? And, no, I've never seen that. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. And you'd go in there, and he'd just be in there working. He'd You'd buy stuff and sell it. And to me, he was like a celebrity. Yeah. And so many tourists went there, and I thought that was just the greatest thing. That's kind of like your Larry Edge, sounds like. Yeah, I mean, Larry Edge also owned a stock car track and a go-kart track right there in town. Yeah, he, was he the mayor? Ooh, Larry Edge was running things. Yeah. Yeah. Pitton, yeah. Larry Edge, he passed away, but I'm still friends with his grandson, but Larry Edge passed. That's why the store's closed now. Mm -hmm. But the Penton Grill's still running. So if you're in that area, stop and get yourself a patty melt. <clears throat> yeah, I feel like places like that have great food. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it is really good. Yeah, the best hot dog I ever had was in Knoxville Gas Station. Just like a mom and pop, or the yeah, I'll never remember. It was I want to say it was across a bridge. I mean, this was I had to be nineteen. It was somewhat like the stadium and all that stuff, and then there's a bridge you go over the river right there. Uh -huh. And I wanted maybe that gas station was right there, and I remember just best hot dog I ever had. And stuck with you this long. Stuck huh? with me this. Yeah, long. you've mentioned that, it on the podcast before. Yeah. Yeah. God, it must have been great. We used to get hamburgers in a bag that you would microwave at Larry Edge's store. <laughs> And I was thinking about that the other day. How gross that I'd never do that now, but we used to tear those up back oh, then. I yeah. would. Ballpark. I like a nice hamburger. Yeah, like a hamburger. I think I would like that hamburger yeah. a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just a little hamburger in a microwave. Mm -hmm. Some state, well, now I guess it's down to New Jersey's the only state, the whole state, you can't pump your own gas. They have someone has to pump it for you. Oregon, up until 2018, they pumped their own, he had a, you couldn't pump your own gas, but now they'll allow counties that have fewer than 40,000 residents to pump their own gas. But if you're in a big city, you still can't pump it. And people freaked out in Oregon when it first they first started how to, how to do it because they didn't know how to do it. They didn't want to do it. There's one, uh, there's one guy right there wow. commenting that uh, this is dangerous and um, – they just never had to pump their own gas. And That's a grown time. man. I drank gas as a kid. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. like, I mean, come on. <laughs> <laughs> that is crazy. That is a that is a dude that you want to go. What are you doing? Yeah. He said I had to do it once in California while visiting my brother and almost died doing it. It's like what happened? Yeah. This is a service only qualified people should perform. And that wow. is why the wall is is there because they're afraid somebody will pull off with a pump still attached to their car aaron yeah or i've done that and uh you know nobody got hurt <laughs> they they think people now are too too distracted and and well, i mean they've always done this so i guess they just think qualified people need to be handling flammable you liquids you do see every now and then just somebody at a like ripping a cigarette while they're pumping their gas you know like yeah. that that's pretty dangerous probably yeah lucy but, put that out <laughs> no, I'm, not, I'm, just, I'm talking you know you go out there where it's like these small towns where the gas station is kind of like the cultural hub of the city. Yeah. And those people out there are just ripping them. I had a buddy. He would, to show you that a cigarette would not light gas on fire, he would throw <laughs> a cigarette into a pail of gas. <laughs> and it wouldn't light. It, it wouldn't light. I guess it has to be a flame and not oh, the cigarette. Not the, just the. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Well, so everybody can smoke. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah, just don't light it while you're standing there. Oh, you know, okay. well, it's already light lit it, when you pull. Light up. it in the car. <laughs> yeah, and then get out and start pumping. <laughs> Did you guys ever see Zoolander? Yes, <laughs> they're just having a water fight with the gas hoses, and uh, then yeah. one of them lights a cigarette. They just all blow up. Yeah, they did. Uh, I would always. You turn your car off when you pump gas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I always got nervous about that. They had some do's and don'ts that, and the only thing that I have done is don't get back in your car while it's pumping. They said, don't do that. And in Massachusetts, um, they don't even allow, you know, the locks that, mm -hmm. that most of us oh, use, yeah. they don't even have them there. Or I guess they didn't at one time because it's very cold there. It's a lot of static electricity. There's a chance you get back in your car, some static electricity builds up and causes a fire. 
I've gone to other gas stations if they don't have the locking pump. That infuriates me if yeah. they don't have it. Yeah. You put your cap in there. Oh, okay. Oh, will that work too? Mm-hmm. Dang. All right. no, Wouldn't it be no, no, take no. more time to go to another gas station than just sit there? It's not about the time. It's the principle yeah. of that lock? It's like you lost a customer. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm saying. You'll remember it. But it's Did like, you ever check the other pump just to see if one was missing? No, I haven't done that. I mm-hmm. should think about that. But it's I'm so mad that I'm like, you know, sometimes I'll stay. Also, if a gas pump's real slow, That's I'll go, nah, I'll just get a couple of gallons here. I'll move along. You have a lot of ups and downs with gas stations. Yeah. <laughs> I've been to a lot of them. Yeah. I get frustrated pretty quickly with them. I don't know what they're doing sometimes. Mm-hmm. Or they'll go, like, you ever sit in there and it goes, see cashier? I'm like, no, I'm not coming in. Yeah. I've had a problem with my card here, but I'm not coming in. Cancel, yeah. cancel, cancel. Can you get, uh, <laughs> well, what do you do? You just, just leave? Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Can you get gas 24 hours at a gas station? Some of them. Most of them, I think. Most of them. It doesn't even need to be, no one needs to be there. Right. Yeah. It does seem like a very dangerous, like, because you see videos where people are like, they're my favorite videos. Like people are building a fire and then they pour a little gas on it and then they, the gas runs up the tank and then they throw it and then their <laughs> whole backyard catches on fire. Mm. And then the video always ends. I'm like, no, I want to see what happened yeah. next. Yeah. But it's like, it's so flammable. And we're just like handling it. Have you ever wondered how the pump knows when to c- cut off when it's full? Is a guy inside? <laughs> <laughs> He's looking yeah. through the hole. Because that's good. I assume they ha- just had it worked out. I never really. <laughs> well, they do have it worked yeah. out. It's a device called a Venturi device. And it, I guess air is coming out of your tank while the gas is going in. There's another little hose within the hose. No one ever points the hose to look at it. But there's a smaller hose that I guess sucks air out. And it builds up, and you can tell when it's full. Hmm. Do you uh, science? Man. Do you always go once it once it stops? Do you go a little bit over? Oh, always. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I'll tell you when I'm done. Yeah, <laughs> top it off. Get a couple more. And I, have you? I've had it not stop. I have before. spewed really? it out, out of there. Yeah. I have spewed it out of there. Yeah. Yeah. I will. I put it in, and then I go walk inside. Always. Yeah. That's what I do. And it's just running. Lock it up. You just trust it to stop. Mm-hmm. They tell you not to do that. They do. There are warnings on the thing. Yeah, I say a lot of stuff. <laughs> yeah, I may have told the story yeah. on here before about a comic who did that, and it overflowed. Roger Keese, you know Roger Keese? No. And uh, I mean, they had to like call nine one one, just shut down the gas station. He had like a two hundred forty dollar gas bill. Jeez, how long was he in there? I don't know, but he said he was in line, and somebody came in and was like. There's gas spewing everywhere. And he was like, oh, that's feel sorry for that sucker. <laughs> <laughs> Call 911 and then like, Can everybody get back. And they had to like bring in a bunch of sand and just oh, all this stuff. Do you and call 911? I called the fire department. Yeah. So 911 goes to both of them. They decide what. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What's the problem? About it. Yeah. You always think 911 police. Yeah. So ambulance. who answers it? The police, and then they did, that lady decides. It's like a neutral dispatcher, and then they they get in touch with whoever yeah. you need. Never really thought about it. Have you never called nine one one before? Not that I may. I feel like maybe once for me. Uh, yeah, no, may I feel like maybe once. I think I've had an accident. Maybe yeah. like an accidentally called. Have you called it? Yeah, I've called before. How many times? A bunch. Probably four or five times now that I think about it. What are you doing? (laughs) If I just see a car, if I see a car accident or- Your gout uh, flares up? I've been in a few accidents where you're supposed to call 911 and tell them if you're on the side of the road. Four or five times. Probably four or five times. I've called so many times. Well, <laughs> that's a trailer park. I mean, that's like that's like number three on the speed dial. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You I call nine one one. They go, "Hey, Dustin." It's, uh, yeah, it goes your it goes your grandmother, mom, nine one one. That's your speed dial. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's like that's yeah. I mean, uh, just all the time. Like, I, uh, you know, you see a fire, you're like, "Well, I'll call." It's like a fun. <laughs> it's fun to be the one that calls. Where do you see a fire at? Just people's houses. Yeah. You know, I mean, like just driving a house is on fire one time. We called 911 and it's a lot of fun. Just making know? sure y'all heard about My it. My sister is Have you diabetic. honestly called it a lot? 
Yeah, oh yeah. My sister was real diabetic. She used to go into these like uh, weird kind of diabetic trances or yeah. whatever. And we would call, you know, we would have to call that 911. For the ambulance to come and like trans, <laughs> yeah, give her some glucose. I better go. I don't know. She's on one of her, <laughs> but she's just you know she's, she's on be, her diabetes dance right now. <laughs> she'd just be sitting there like staring, like, like staring off into space, and you couldn't get her to do anything. Like, right. well, Margaret, <laughs> Margaret, <laughs> call nine or one one. I is dusty. She doing her dance. <laughs> she doing her long yeah. stare. <laughs> She's back at it. Yeah. She's back at yeah, it. Yeah, she would. You know. uh, she had a cup of M and M's. Set her off. <laughs> and I get, you know, I used to get a prank called a little bit. Um, my mom worked third shift, and I'd stay by myself. And uh, you know, how they used to have that uh, call where it'd say, uh, uh, "You have a this is AT and T with a collect call from," and then it'd be like, "Oh, it's Jim." But this right. one, I, I picked it up one night. Goes, uh, "This is AT and T with a collect call from." I know where you live. You're dead. And I was like, I freaked out. Yeah. Ran to my sister's house, you know, who was my neighbor. <laughs> She's in a she, trance. She wasn't in a trance. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Thankfully. Yeah. I'd be like, I need help from a prank caller and <laughs> for my, my sister. sister's having a <laughs> diabetic thing. Yeah. yeah. Said, said two. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, while I got you. <laughs> yeah. A lot of smoke in here. I think yeah. she's been smoking a lot. If we can get the fire I don't department. Know, what said everyone? Yeah, you grew up in like a yeah. jungle. Can we like, get the cops, is- the fire department, and the ambulance down here? <laughs> Send everybody. <laughs> yeah. Send everybody. And yeah, we got a lot going on. Larry Edge comes down there to see what's <laughs> yeah, happening. Yeah. <laughs> he goes, Dad Gummit boys. What are y'all doing down here? We're like, we need candy. Hey, yo, Larry. <laughs> hey, Put we're it on the talking tab. to him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wait, wait, wait. Yeah, go ahead. Did, did, who did you find out who prank called you? No, never found it. Yeah. I, like I, I assume, you know, my mom's name was in the um, the phone book, right? <laughs> so I, and then they had another call they made later on the voicemail, left some, you know, they said some, you know, things that will be targeted at a woman <laughs> that I shouldn't say. And um, so we figured they just looked, they were just flipping through the phone book, doing things. Mm-hmm. Bathroom you know? wall. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Who knows? I did. Yeah. Well, I went. <laughs> you can't say it. Well, nah. I shouldn't say. But right. it's uh, it's a good time. We're well, having a good yeah. time. Yeah. Do you talk on your cell phone while you're pumping gas? Uh, no. Because of safety? Yeah, I think you just heard it once, and then you're like, I'm not gonna do it. I heard what? You that know, your cell phone could set cause a it fire off or something. What? You've ever heard that? Your cell phone could set the set it off. I don't know if I was, don't do it. I, and I heard that, and that's why I didn't do it. And then now, more and more of my cell phone, I'm just like I think about like the whatever the waves and radiate. Like you're just oh, kind of okay. like I don't need this near me. It gets hot. Yeah, and you're like yeah. I'm less and less. I just I throw my phone. All I just want it away from me. Yeah. The other night after our so on Sunday on our big cheat night, we went to go eat. We went bowling at a Sunday bar. All this. I just left my phone at home. I mean, left it back at the house. I was, I just don't want it. Like it's like it's I, I it's. Do you like that? I love it because yeah. it's, it's. I'm so tired of. I don't know. It's like it just doesn't stop. It's constant. It's constant. It's always near you. You're like I just don't want to. I'm in. Like I'm hanging out. Now, do you ever find yourself? Do you ever like feel your phone vibrate yeah, when it's not on you? Yeah. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. I had a thing I thought of this week. This is like a. Uh, you know, people tell you always be in the moment. Like that's a big thing, right? Yeah. Always, <clears throat> you got to make sure you're in this moment. I think people are only in their moment, and no one's living outside of it. No one's thinking past, present, or anything. They're only in their moment. <clears throat> so it's a weird thing to say because you look at like people, like you know, it's like they see on Instagram, like them posting pics and videos and. Make sure you're enjoying the moment that you're in. You're like, all of you are only in the moment. You're only thinking, that's why you're you're thinking about you in this moment. What can I get out of this moment? Yeah. You're not thinking, how dumb do I look filming stuff? Or am I going to be able to tell this story later because I was filming? Am I going to be able to right. have this memory? Am I going to be able to like, you know, anything else? You're only in the moment. Mm-hmm. And you should be out of the moment a little bit. You're living the moment. You're doing it. Yeah. Zoom out a little bit. Zoom out, even if you're in it. Like I know they're they're saying like don't just be on your phone and like look around and be enjoying where you are. But you're like, I think people are doing that. It's you're not. You can get out of it. 
That's interesting. Yeah, yeah there's balance that perspective. There. Yeah, yeah, there's no balance. I don't, I don't know how to live it. Yeah, you should probably have a balance. I don't like the balances. I don't like, like, I don't have a balance. <laughs> you don't like balance? It's all or nothing? I mean, I think it kind of is. I mean, you know, it depends on what you're trying to do, but it's like balance. Someone telling you to be balanced is just like, I don't have a conversation about it. So they're just like, just be not, you should be balanced, like a diet. I think just living to like live and not living for content. Yeah. There's so much out there where it's like, oh, I'm doing this. I'm feeling this way. This should be content. Like I'm, if I'm gardening, I always think, well, I should film some of this because this will be good content. But then I'm like, no, I'm gardening so I don't have to do these other things. Yeah. I was people st- don't think about the, like the stuff going forward. Like <clears throat> it's like they don't – because it's like you can see – like living in the moment, maybe I'm not talking about exactly the like to make sure we're present, but it's like you can see a lot of times people can have a problem come and they don't see that that problem was on its way the whole time because they're just in their world at that moment. Like, <clears throat> yeah, they got blinders, blinders on, blinders on. Yeah, so they just they they are just walking and then just they get crushed by something because they don't think about like the consequences of this going forward or. Just be a little bit think think about what you're doing, but be also going like I know where this can lead. Yeah, like a diet, like talking about being balanced. Well, if you want to, unless you're fortunate to be like able to just be balanced, then 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 you're lucky and you do get to be balanced. But I wasn't able to really be balanced. I went too far, so I have to go extreme to try to learn to be balanced. But you got to go pretty hard one way to learn to try to have a balance and the balance is basically you don't get to eat candy ever like you do occasionally which is not a balance it's not like you're like i can eat one and then i eat an apple Mm -hmm. like you know it's like no one's gonna that seems like a weird way to live or i don't think most people can live like that i don't know what that is i was just thinking about that with the phone like i get told a lot too I get told to make sure you're appreciating what happened or what's going on. I'm I'm the most appreciative. I'm in it. Yeah. I I I I've I've been here the whole time. <laughs> I like it's and it's it, it's it's people that are it's me trying to make sure other people can appreciate it. Mm. That's what's like I gotta try to make sure because you have people that like come now and then they're like, wow, this is amazing. You're like, yeah, it was never it was not like this at all. Like Laura gets it. You know, Laura, we were in it at the beginning. <clears throat> but when people come on now and they think it's all amazing, it's like, yeah, but it wasn't, you know, I mean, I wasn't complaining about it, but it's like, I appreciate it very much. Like people only see what you have now and think that that's the way it's always been. Yeah. They're always like, make sure you don't, make sure you appreciate where you're at and don't take all this for granted. You're like, yeah, yeah, I'll never yeah. do that. Uh-huh. Cause I had to go get all this. Right. So I do appreciate it. I'm truly grateful that I'm allowed to even do this, that the audience is even, I can't believe that they want to listen to what I have to say. Right. And I am scared that it can all go away. And not because of like a cancellation, just because I'm not good enough to keep their attention. So I'm very appreciative, but it's like, as people come, it's like, you got to make sure that everybody's appreciative. I got to make sure my daughter's appreciative. And like, you know, just reminder, like, yeah, this is not, we're very fortunate, and it takes a lot of hard work to get this. It's a weird, I don't know. Yeah. I can get like, I get sometimes with, you know, I'll get weird when someone's some, there. Make sure you appreciate it. You're like, yeah, yeah. Oh, I am. Trust well, it's me. a weird yeah. thing Trust to me. say to people, too, to, for people to say that sort of thing. It's them being nice. I, sometimes right. I understand it. Like, you're trying to give someone advice, or you're trying to say something. I'm not, not even saying really I got told this this week, but it's like, Make sure you slow down and look at what's going on around you. Yeah, yeah. No, I am. I am. And you know how hard it is to keep it going? I got to think about it every day. Yeah. I think about it every second because I'm trying to create something. I'm trying to do something that's that's not for me. It's like I can appreciate it, but like I want everybody, I want to create a world that like everybody can enjoy. And like so, it's like you got to be on the grind. You got to be doing it, dude. You can't just sit there and just go like you're right. 
I do appreciate it. You know. Yeah. Well, you know, it's like people will say to me sometimes that they'll go lately they've been saying they go, Oh, you're running your own merch table. And I'm like, Well, you know, there may come a time if I'm lucky where I can't handle my own merch table, right? But I'm like, I'm happy to even be in the position where there's a line of people wanting to buy my merch. Mm -hmm. I've stood at the the table with CDs and everybody pass by me and go buy the next guy's stuff yeah. mm -hmm. many times. So it's like, I'm, you know, I like selling my merch. I mean, I, you know, like I say, if I'm lucky, one day I'll be at a place where I can't handle it, right? Mm -hmm. But I like it. I feel like it's fun. After the show, I come, people talk to me, I sell them a shirt, you know, I don't know. It's like, if you want to learn appreciation, it's like, just make something. Yeah. It could be as building a birdhouse. Like, if you're a kid, yeah. go actually build something. And then you just appreciate it. Yeah. And it's like, I know that's a very small example, and I, but I never thought of it when I was a kid or anything. But when something's actually... You're like, you know, someone made a cup or you see someone makes those poetry, you know, or poetry. Yeah, you uh, see what goes into it. Like they make, you know, a vase. Mm -hmm. Like clay pots or something. Yeah. And you see it and you're like, I mean, that looks terrible. <laughs> and you see that person showing you because they're as proud of it. Yeah. Because they appreciate it. Yeah. Because they were like, you know how long this took me, dude? I don't yeah. know how to make this. Yeah. I don't know what I'm doing. He's like, and like, that's why you end up, like, that's how you learn appreciation, I think. And appreciation is a great thing to learn because you're, you're, you're very proud of what you did and you want to strive and then you want to do it more. Like I, like this is going on a whole, I, but this is a, po a positive. This is yeah, 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 I love it. It's like, <laughs> I see like some people talk about, you know, people talk about mental health a lot now. And so they talk about like, uh, <clears throat> I feel like they talk a lot about like what other people got to like, Here's I've got this problem, and so here's what you should be doing to help to deal with my problem. Instead of being like, I need to figure my problem out, and then that way I don't burden everybody with. Like I saw, like I think younger people are talking about that a lot now. Mental health is a big deal. I have stuff like I get it. We, but it's not your burden to figure me out. I don't get to walk around and make you have to figure out how to be around me. I need to figure out how to be around you. So I need to solve like that. Talk to me, talk to someone. You got to go talk to someone and go, how do I not be the problem? I can't, it, it, I, it, nothing will ever be fixed. If I wanted all of y'all to do deal with what I have to deal with, and I have trouble dealing with this all the time, when stuff doesn't get done the way I want it to be done, I can get very like, why are you not doing it? I know how to do it. How are you not knowing how to do this? Well, that's not fair because I'm the one that's reaping the, or the benefits and the award, the rewards. So either I need to do it or I can teach them how to do it or I can't expect them to do it. And that's what you got to deal with. But people have that with, I see like, like that's social media. It's like, man, it's like, I'm about to, maybe I'm just getting older and I, I just can't handle it. But people talk about mental health on there all the time. And it's like, well, everybody has it. Everybody on earth has it. And it's all like, so here's how you deal with me when I walk in this situation. You're like, you're never going to be happy if you got to make, you know, people you got to yeah. manage so, you, so it works the way you want it to work. Why would you want to manage that many people? That doesn't make, why would I ever want to manage I mean, that's, that's, you, it's like, it might as well be running a Walmart and you're like, have a hundred employees. If you go to the grocery store, you got to just be like, I need everybody to act the way I want you to act uh -huh. or I'm not going to have a good day. Uh, yeah. Well, that's insane. Right. Or I can try to go, let me be the boss of one person. Yeah. And then I'll be able to handle. And some of that is, is like, I'll just mentally go because I would lose it if like stuff didn't go the way I want it to go. And so I would learn to sometimes just tell myself like, you know, and I would do it privately. I'm not trying to do it, but you just kind of go to yourself and go like the day's going to go. Like who knows how this day's going to go. Look at it as being kind of fun. I bet my name's misspelled on that thing. Yeah. So could I lose my mind? Could I find out why that was like that? This is a big special. 
I sold out four shows at this place. Yeah. Who do you think you are? Could I do it that way, or is it funny? It's funny. Yeah. Because who am I? I'm nobody. I'm 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 nobody. Yeah, that wasn't done with ill. That wasn't with done with ill. I'm, yeah. I'm, I, and who am I? Why should they know my name? They shouldn't. I'm just an idiot. When I go like when I met people after the show, they're waiting by the fence. I took pictures with them. And they're nice, and you're like, yeah, dude, I'm you. Like, I can't believe you're here. I can't believe you even right. want a picture with me. Who I am nobody. I am just a dude that just happens to be funny. But it's like, I don't know. I, and I don't know why I went on this big. But I don't think this counts as a rant. I get no, it, though. No, no, no. Maybe it does. You're like, all right. It's a happy rant, though. It's a happy rant. Yeah. I want people to be positive. I just saw it. You see a lot of that. Well, some some people should ha- they have an energy and they should put it like you were talking about like you should like managing a Walmart. It's like maybe that's what some people need to do. They have this management thing in them where they want to tell everybody how to be. It's like well, you should put manage that, you put that or or put that energy into actually a job where it requires you to manage people. Yeah, yeah. If you want it, well, yeah, if you have that, you might have very good skills. Yeah. to be a real leader. Right. Because you 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 have direction that you want things done the way that they, you think they should be done, but you can't be uh, not put in any situation because you think this is too much. Like you get to like I get not wanting to be like if someone like yeah dude I want sometimes you want to be alone sometimes like you're like I just want to hang out with my buddies and I don't want it to be and I'll feel that all the time like are you you think I need to be this or I don't want to be too much or if I got to go do something, it's going to be a whole big thing. But you got to just like realize like, yeah, you got to do that and be like, so I've got to figure out how do I do that? It's not your burden. It's right. not your, it, I, that's not fair to be like, you know, you shouldn't be like, oh, I'm sorry. I did it. Like you see me, if I get upset and you see, and you're like, I'm sorry, did I do something wrong? You could never do something wrong. There's no, there's an, a zero chance you could ever do something wrong. My job is to, handle myself to then be like, no, of course not. Yeah. And then it's like- Right, to be able to just roll with it. You got to just roll with it. Yeah. People can't roll with it. No one did this to to me this weekend either. Like, so I know (laughs) people will hear this podcast and, and, you know, people that were there, no one did this to me. It's more stuff I saw in passing, like on Instagram, people that would not even know me. Like, it's just, I'm seeing a lot of it because you, now you get so much post from other things and, uh, I feel like it's younger kids and yeah, just I, like, golly, you're never going to. I think people are very sad these days. And it's like, are. I think the thing about it, it's like, let's figure out why we're sad and try yeah, to fix that. And that, that is the go talk to someone. Yeah. That is the like, you Probably might be the way to, we eat, the way we act, the lack the of way exercise, we the, yeah. uh, I'll that talk we're about on that. social media too much. All of those oh, things make you sad. That phone is like, it's not good. Yeah. I, I. Yeah. Our food is so bad. The food and, is bad. And then, you know, nobody drinks water. They're all dehydrated out here. And they need a little yeah. water, so maybe some liquid water. IV. You know what I mean? Yeah. Get some. But hydration is big. It is. And people are sad. It's hard, not to, it's hard not to realize this stuff. But, like, it was I, – I, mean, I still love all these – I mean, I, I'm gonna, I'll end up doing – I'll talk about the food at some point or what I did. Uh but it's I don't know. I, 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 we get this is on gas stations. Take your shoes off. Walk in the grass. You <laughs> yeah. know what I mean. Drink well, a little gas sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> drink a little gas. Drink a little gas. You'll appreciate how your life was before you drank that gas. Yeah. I think I've drank gas too. Yeah. It's why have I drank gas? I've drank gas. I was trying to get it out of a lawnmower with a hose oh. pipe to put it into a four wheeler. Yeah. And I oh, I drank gas. I drank a little bit of it. Dude, that's crazy to drink fun. gas and be like I can't put my finger on why. Yeah, I did. that is. Yeah. Well, a lot of gas stations have signs to say, ease back into it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> He's like, that's an end right there. That's it's like really the, a master at easing back yeah, into it. Yeah, that's like the weatherman. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> After a horrible story. And he yeah. To- and he goes, 75 degrees out today. <laughs> Did you see that clip that went viral of them talking about one of the morning shows talking about the queen dying? And they're like, they're the queen has died and they're mourning. But back here in America, we're celebrating the start of football. So it was just such a hard cut back to American. It's that stuff too. People don't. Yeah, man, the queen's a big deal. It's like, (laughs) if it's not a big deal to you, does not mean it's not a big deal to it's gigantic. Yeah. It's gigantic. It's huge. So is the start of the NFL. I know. But it's like, as people are like, oh, you're the queen. We got our own problems. You're like, 
there can be many problems. Yeah, yeah. It's okay. We can focus on more than one People thing. People just need to realize like social media is not real. That's yeah. the other thing. It's like just Big calm time. down. Like let's like Big time. No one, everybody's normal. That's why it's, you know. Well, according to Snopes, there's never been I don't know, yeah, <laughs> go ahead. There's never been a, a fire enough that's, that's been caused. <laughs> that's what you should have said, Aaron. <laughs> You could have gotten a good enough in right there. <laughs> There's never been a fire caused by a cell phone, but there are signs that say no cell phones, a lot, a lot of gas pumps, because it does cause static electricity, so it could happen, they say. So you shouldn't have any electronic equipment around a gas pump. Or wear a sweater. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Static electricity. There are videos or, of yeah. people getting in their car and getting back out and fires start. Or a balloon, right? Yeah. I think they just don't want you talking, so you have to focus on those advertisements yeah i would not be surprised if that's the real reason i love the money that's been spent on gas pumps to put in quick little ads i'll watch them you've been scared to death by one like it just starts talking all of a sudden i mean i've jumped out of my skin late at night i think i'm the only one there and then the the local news anchor so um (laughs) you know all of them have a secret mute button by the way no way yeah that the second from the top button on the right is a mute button oh wow. how about that uh, if you, and it, i think Good it's job, universal Aaron. i've tried it before it works if you ever want that guy to stop talking just push that button i always you know that. it's like do they i think uh i like it because you get to see some of the local news sometimes yeah like you're like ah Check it. stuff. i'll take that sometimes it's just ads it's just commercial if it's just ads yeah yeah oh, the queen died and football season's starting <laughs> that's where you found out from uh they should have a game on now, do you stop? I have. Uh, I always let it get to the E. The light comes on, and then I fill it all the way up, and then I just do it ag- again. Hmm. Oh no! I'll. I think about. <clears throat> you think very in the moment, and. <laughs> <laughs> I think about the situation. <laughs> like I would. I think about like. I'm not saying it does happen, but sometimes I think if it's at half. If there's if I'm driving by and it's like I can take a right, fill it up, and get back right back on, and make no big like cutting across or, and it's just an easy transition, I'll do it then. So sometimes if it's very smooth, I think about my route coming back. Like if you come to my house from the airport, that gas station that's when you make that right. Yeah. <clears throat> off uh, off Concord Road, there's one right on the corner. Yeah. <clears throat> and so it's like I got to make a right. So uh, that one, you just kind of, it's almost like you're just going through. And I think the amount of time I'm going to, the least amount of time I'm going to spend is that's that's the least amount of time I can spend. So I would do the gas. You like take a right in there. Or if I just, if one's on my side, mm-hmm. you just kind of figure it out there. They say to maximize efficiency, you're supposed to fill it up when it's halfway empty. Why is that? Because the car performs better when it has the most gas in it. So mm-hmm. rather than let it get all the way down to E, when it's halfway through, when it's halfway down, then you fill it back up. But does the other gas stay in the bottom? Old I gas? I don't know. Or is it like a popcorn <laughs> machine? It's like it comes, the old comes up. It's all kind of mixing in. It's a great question. I don't think it's like oil and water. It's just like another layer of gas. Is it yeah. good? So if you do that, is it like immediately drive over like a few speed bumps? Just to shake it just up. Yeah, hit the brakes a lot. Hit yeah. the brakes really. <laughs> yeah. Get it. You don't you want shake that old gas and the new gas to get. They I should would have speed bumps right at, as you exit. Rumble strips. Rumble strips. <laughs> just to be like, yeah. <laughs> just to shake the gas up. <laughs> yeah. I'm with now, that. do you know what uh, mid grade gas is? Eighty nine. No, I think that's regular. Oh, oh eighty seven. Oh no, you're right. Eighty seven, eighty nine, ninety one. But yeah. I didn't know this. But it's just the regular and the premium coming together. Oh, there you go. Oh, got that. Yeah, mix. it's the same principle. Just mixing it up. They're just mixing it up. Oh, really? Yeah. Do you put? You don't ever get full. Or mid grade is that? Do the you mid, guys put premium. The mid grade is just the two mixed together. Yeah. I've never premium? had a car yeah. where it would make sense to put premium. Is out. there a car where it makes sense? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. Like, no, was, they tell you. <laughs> they tell you it makes sense. <laughs> yeah. They said it. What? it you're, I, I did, <laughs> I did this. Yeah. I mean, I, uh, <laughs> they tell you it makes sense. Yeah. The war- they said the warranty may not 
they may not honor it if you damage if you your get engine. like new Cadillacs or whatever, like a new SUV or they, I think they tell you to the high, you know, put the premium. Now, are there any bad side effects if you have a terrible car that you put premium in? <laughs> Will the car not know what to do with I it? I think it's just the premium is just less ethanol, right? Is that it's like being skinny fat if you do like a bad car with premium gas? Like you're like, is that guy skinny? He takes shirt off. You're like, good. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's worse than I thought. Pick a side. <laughs> they used to, the early days, they would sell gas in glass containers so you could see what kind of gas you're getting huh. because it was such bad gas. No transparency like that anymore, though. Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah. Why is there a paper straw in there? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's <laughs> food in there. They have a strategy how to build gas stations. Um, they say that the best place to build a gas station is right after you go through a light at a four-way intersection on the right-hand side. See, because then you're, it's easier to get out. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. So you you guys all like a Bucky's, right? You guys are big Bucky's. I made my first stop this weekend. Oh, yeah? Uh, how'd you feel For the first it? time. It was good. I mean, I just ran in. I was going to Knoxville to do shows, and there's one in Crossville, Tennessee now. And Maybe we've talked about that. I imagine you overwhelmed. I hate them. <laughs> yeah. no, I just had to run and use the bathroom, but there's a guy playing horse See, with no name I'm in there. overwhelmed in there. I would, yeah, I'm like, what's going on in here? Where did everybody come from? Yeah, did you not really go walk around and look around? I didn't have time. Um, <laughs> yeah. I you got to pick a better gas station. In the moment. How do you not? <laughs> what are you talking about? Bucky's, we've talked about it like it's going to Disney World. Yeah. And you just ran in and go, where's your bathroom? And bounce. <laughs> I got a glimpse of it. It's 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 a big gas station. Browse the jerkies, man. <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, everybody's like, you might be the only person that used it as if it's a map coat. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's true. I was with Angela this weekend on the road, Angela Johnson, and she said they did the same thing. They stopped that same Bucky's and just used the bathroom. Wow, you don't go walk so around? I would have loved to if I had more time, but I just... How late were you? Well, I, I mean, I, was, I wasn't I was late, but I didn't have time to to browse. Yeah, at least, Five minutes. Yeah. I'm not saying go in there for an hour. Get yourself some chocolate-covered peanuts. Did you, you literally go, go car, bathroom, car? I mean, the bathrooms are way in the back of Bucky, so I walked through and so, saw it. As so I that cut out some time. Walked yeah. back the walk there. Get a brisket sandwich on your did way. You, as you walked through, did you think I should have parked on the other side? <laughs> I did. Yeah, I did. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was incredibly busy in there. Everybody was going to Knoxville for the Tennessee-Florida game, uh, yeah. and, and the lines were long. At the checkout line. Well, Dusty called me after his first Bucky's trip. Yeah. You couldn't wrap your head around what you just saw. It w- I mean, because I was so excited. Did you think you were in a Macy's? <laughs> I, I, yeah, I don't know. It's hard to describe it. I mean, there's just, I go to a lot of Loves, and I'm a big fan of a Loves truck stop. And so I thought, well, all right, Bucky seems like a bigger Loves. But I was like, what is happening in here? It's would, so busy. Would Bucky's be... For trailer park living, if you got a present from Bucky's, would it be like someone went to Nordstrom? <laughs> <laughs> well, this and is you would, you would just be like, we can't afford this. This is what Bucky's would be like for trailer park living. It would be like, hey, w- do you guys want to go to Bucky's today? Let's make and a then, day out of and it, and that would be the trip. Oh, yeah, yeah. But I, that that'd be the trip for me. That'd be a trip for a lot yeah. of people. I think. I mean, it'd be it's like so crazy. Let's go to Bucky's. Let's get a brisket sandwich. Let's get some jerky. My Shop. sister, uh, whenever she comes up from Alabama to visit, likes to stuck, stop at Bucky's for the brisket sandwich. Oh, yeah. She really likes the brisket sandwich. It's great. But I can't, I mean, it's so much going on in there. It's a madhouse in there. I like a loves too. Yeah. But I like Bucky's better. You know why I like a gas station? I think it's kind of beautiful in a way. I think it's the last place. I think it's as close as we can get to a true representative cross section of America. It's the last place where all different types of people are in there. Yeah. All different backgrounds, races, religions, whatever. It's 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 America in these gas stations. Because everyone Cause needs everybody gas. has to stop there. I don't know if there's another place like that. I've been to gas beautiful. stations with <laughs> with the Amish there. DMV. Yeah. You disagree? I mean, no, no, yeah, I get it. Yeah. yeah, I've seen Amish people at the gas station, a busload of them. There yeah. you go, just hanging out in there, getting stuff. Yeah, 
beards and old uniforms. Dude. <laughs> they wear old uniforms? Yeah, they're like wearing their old, you know, an old Amish uniform. Yeah. We saw, I was in uh, Phoenix this weekend, and we hiked to the Grand Canyon, and about four miles into the Grand Canyon, a pack of Amish showed up. Hiking yeah. <laughs> in the full-on uniform. Yeah. No water bottles, just Skechers, like slacks, and and I mean, I was, a jacket that the the vest, yeah, and the long sleeve shirt. What commitment, yeah, you know, and Skechers, and well, they all wear Skechers. They, they did. Those like black, like bus boy shoes. Oh, okay, shoes for crews. Is that what they're called? That was what we called because it had the the bottoms that could grip the floor. Oh yeah, shoes for crews. For C- crews. Crews, like a crew of work people. Oh. Like a work crew. Yeah. It looked like orthopedic shoes. Mm-hmm. So the first convenience store to stay open 24 hours was a 7-Eleven uh, in Austin, Texas. After a University of Texas football game, this is like the 1960s, students kept flooding in and people at the game, and they just never could close. They stayed open all night, and then they started realizing there's people that want to come around the clock. So they started open round the clock, twenty four hours, and then they were like, "Oh, games are only once a week." <laughs> <laughs> now the, there's one hundred fifty thousand convenience stores in the United States. Just wow. just alone. Most people spend how much time would you say spend in a grocery store and a convenience store? So accounting, More? For, you spend six seconds. So <laughs> half hour. Well, the walk was. <laughs> okay. Before I told that story, y'all would have said I spent all day in there. That's true. Uh, you saying uh, wait, grocery wait. store? The average person spends forty-one minutes in a grocery store. Forty-one yeah. minutes. Mm-hmm. Gas station twelve. Three and a half minutes. Three and a half in and out. Because most people that uh, what well, twelve is a lot. Yeah. Twelve. Well, yeah. What are you doing in there? If you're making a hot dog, you could be making a hot dog at the Loves. You ever if had a, everybody think about, spent twelve minutes? That's you, a lot. <laughs> <laughs> about ten minutes in, the, the employees would be like, "What's this guy doing?" Yeah, yeah he's casing the place. Been here a yeah, while. Guy work here. Most people go in, grab a drink or something, and yeah, I don't think shifts are twelve minutes long. <laughs> <laughs> Loves is one of the last places that they'll say "Welcome to Love." When you walk in, they'll welcome you. Welcome to Loves. And what do you say back? I, I give them a wave. Yeah, I go all right. <laughs> Over 80% of convenience store food. Go, which one's yours? <laughs> that big one in the back over there. You got a big semi. That's you right. Think? Yeah, exactly. Just assume. Exactly. I got my little headphone on with the with the mic. Oh, yeah, the Bluetooth. A little trucker, yeah. Yeah, a little yeah. trucker headset. A little loves hack. Uh, they got that other register in the back. Yeah. Go use that. Yep. Okay. I've seen so many times. Long line in the front. And I go, there's another one back Yeah. There. Just go back there with the beef jerky and <laughs> Slim Jams. <Yeah. laughs> Trucker back there trying to pay for eight grand of fuel. <laughs> you just got your little package. Trying to get a shower set up. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and you're over there, I'll take these nerds and <clears throat> some <Right>. Tylenol PM. <laughs> um, 80% of, com- of convenience store food is purchased. I mean, that's purchased is eaten within the first hour. 65% is eaten immediately. Mm, yeah, that's where I'm at. <laughs> I Sometimes plans. you just take the wrapper to the cash register. You know, you've already eaten. <laughs> you know what I mean? You're like, <laughs> that would be 10% eaten before. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, millennials, I'd be you, right? They yeah. buy at least one prepared food from a convenience store each week, meaning that's their meal. Oh. You're I'm, more than that? I'm way above that. I probably spend eighty five percent of my money at gas stations. Really? If I just a total prepared meal, up, like what do you get a sandwich? Not prepared meal, but yeah, maybe like one of you know a sandwich that's wrapped up or something like that. What about a? I um, eat a lot of gas station hot dogs. I had to cut that out. Like a Sheets or a uh, Wawa. Mm-hmm. They have a, a Wawa has a pretty good sandwich. I remember yeah. people really going crazy for Wawa. Yeah. I like a sandwich. They went crazy this past weekend. Yeah. Uh, there was like a news story there. Was in oh, okay. Oh, there was? Yeah. But it was uh, the, oh, okay. there was a, <laughs> the Wawa, uh, that was a big Wawa, as big as like Big J and uh, all the guys I started with were Philly. Yeah. So oh, New yeah. Jersey and like they all loved Wawa. Yeah. So it was like a big deal. Big J would make us go, <clears throat> which we loved it. He'd make us go every time. He's like, we got to go to Wawa and we go get a sandwich there. Wawa. Yeah. It is good. Wawa was the first one that I was like, oh, wow. 
And you can make a hot sandwich. And you're like, this it is beat great. out Firehouse Subs, Jersey Mike's, and Subway for best sandwich. It is really? a great sandwich. Wow. It's my famous one's the Gobbler, made with turkey, gravy, stuffing, and cranberry sauce. Like a Thanksgiving sandwich? Sounds like it. What do you guys think is the number one item bought in a convenience store? Cigarettes. Is, is it about gas? Or? Well, well, besides gas, gas. It, inside the store. Inside the store. It's got to be cigarettes. Gum. Hold on. Hold Tobacco. On. Hold on. Hold on. It's going to be uh, Doritos. Well, that would be snacks. Not that specific. Oh. but oh, So you'll like, say snacks? Oh, oh. I'll say... Uh, oh, I'm not I know I'll drink soda. I'm is going that snacks? I'm That'd be separate. Beer. I'm going beer. Beer's number two. Yeah. Tobacco's number one. All go. right. There snacks number three. Uh, snacks are actually number five. <laughs> what is else is there? Drinks were four. Number Lots th- of drinks. <laughs> number three, lottery tickets. Oh, oh man. I would think that'd be one. Yeah. Did y'all ever drive to another state for lottery tickets? Well, in Alabama, you can't, yeah, you can't get lottery tickets. So I used to go to Georgia. Yeah. It, it, actually, in Alabama, you have to be 19 to get cigarettes. So when I was 18, I would go to Georgia and get cigarettes and lottery tickets. You could mm. smoke them at 18. You can only buy them at 19. Oh, you could smoke them really any age. Yeah, we've had that exact conversation. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Fuck, I'm mean, having deja vu here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, just trying to keep the kids, giving them some life hacks. <laughs> <laughs> this is the all the kids listening. Well, yeah, kids, I mean, you got in trouble buying cigarettes <laughs> in your own state. Why don't you drive on? <laughs> well, I remember a lady in Georgia being like, I, I, you ain't, you're not supposed to be over here buying them. I, I shouldn't even sell them to you. And it's like, well, just yeah, do it. Come on, you know what's happening. <laughs> mm. yeah. Would you just stock up so you didn't have to go all the time? Oh, no. We, we were living in the moment. You, know? yeah. <laughs> you are when you're little. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. When you're little, when you're younger, I, that being said, you are very much in the, like, you're not buying, <clears throat> you're putting fi- $5, I mean, you can't do that anymore, but I'd put $5 of gas in, just enough to get me. Yeah. So as so that is true. And when you're younger, you're kind of just like, I'm getting place to place to place to yeah, place. Yeah, yeah. But if you want that to stop, you got to start thinking of a bigger picture. And I don't think I ever bought a pack of cigarettes that I didn't say this is my last pack. You know what I mean? I'm like, I'm I'm quitting right after this. Mm-hmm. That's good. Man. I did eventually quit. That's cool. And it you feels it. good. There you go. My Congrats. lungs feel good. Yeah. It's. You know, it's you just good. trying to make it better. That yeah, it's good. Kids, to, kids are listening. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah, I get it. It is good to breathe well. Yeah, yeah, it helps. <laughs> you know, it helps. Helps you feel better. Mm-hmm. The more oxygen you get, the happier you are. Mm-hmm. Two most famous convenience store drinks, That's true. both from Seven Eleven. Slurpee, Slurpee, Icy. Mountain well, Dew. Uh, well, Icy is something in itself, and then the Big Gulp. Oh yeah, Big Gulp. Big Gulp. Uh, it was the largest drink available. It, by any reason, 32 ounces is the big gulp. And then they did the double gulp, which is 50 ounces. And then uh, they had the monstrous team gulp, which is 128 ounces. How big a cup is that? 128 ounces. Or do team gulp. Oh, it's like a Gatorade. It's like what you give to a team. <laughs> One of those big tubs. What's the smallest cup on there? What is that? That's an original fountain drink from McDonald's in 1955. Their cups were seven ounces, which oh, is like yeah. an espresso shot yeah. almost. You ever go to the movies though, and they're like, "Hey, if you get the large, you get a free refill." I'm I'm always like, "Who wants a refill after drinking all of this?" Well, you take one to go on the way <laughs> out. <laughs> I've got a refill. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> a pound. I put a lot of ice in. Oh, okay, and so I go. I don't ever get a refill on the popcorn. Yeah, but I go fill another soda up. Yeah. So they used to do Slurpees and Big Gulp. You have to do it behind the counter. You couldn't do it yourself. You had to take it, and or when you asked for it, I they do would remember for that, it. and they would make it. Yeah, and then the Big Gulps became such an issue that when Michael Bloomberg was trying to ban sodas in New York City, they called it the Big Gulp ban. I was living there when that happened. I was furious. Yeah, you were against it. <laughs> yeah, furious. It's going to change your life. Well, it's. I mean. Look, the audacity to go like, yeah, I, mean, I drink a lot of soda. But I, no one should tell me I can't have soda. I'm for yeah. it. Like they were just, like it was, in, that was insane. It was only like a certain amount of ounces. Oh, Yeah, I, was, I agree. Everybody was furious. The nanny state. Yeah. <laughs> so it didn't pass? <laughs> no, I don't know. I don't think so. Yeah. Um, And then the Slurpee. That's like a, in Seinfeld when he runs on... We should all wear name tags. Yeah. 
It's like a version <laughs> of that. Yeah. We all, his other thing was the calories on menus, right? Yeah, that's good. Yeah. That's not bothering you, you know. It's not keeping you from doing it's anything. It's not taking something from somewhere. Right. Yeah. The idea that you go, you are drinking too much soda. You're like, who do you, I mean. Who are you, my mom? Yeah, it just yeah. puts a, a picture of somebody on a in a diabetes trance on a big cult. <laughs> so you like, you can look at it and go, this could be you. Like they do with cigarettes? Yeah. yeah, yeah. In Canada, they the cigarette packs, they have really bad things. Oh, oh they'll have pictures image. of like yeah. diseased yeah. mouths yeah. and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Is there a limit on how much beer you could buy or alcohol? In a gas station? Yeah, I guess anywhere. I don't know. I think it depends on if I've gone to a gas station before and and stumbled, and they've been like, we're not going to sell <laughs> you any more alcohol. Yeah, you're a special case. I remember in Indiana, there was a limit on how many cans of beer you could buy per transaction. So it would have to be split up into multiple transactions. I don't remember what the number was. 72, maybe? Hmm. Did you ever hit it? Oh, yeah, all the time. Yeah. Yeah. So you just have to walk around, get back in line, and just buy it, buy it 72 again. 72 cans? Yeah. So I don't remember the exact number, but it was a cutoff. Like three cases. Yeah, it was after a certain number of cases, you had it had to be rung up separately to comply with Indiana state law. You drink quite a bit back then. I was, we were drinking quite a bit back then. Or you drive 10 minutes and go to Michigan, and it's a anarchy up there. Yeah. You do whatever you want. Where every July 11th, 7-Eleven gives away 500,000 gallons of Slurpee. Mm. In Australia, it's it's November 7th because they write their calendar backwards. Oh, really? Yeah. That's fun. Yeah. So the Slurpees were so big that The Simpsons, they did a parody called The Squishy. And uh, when The Simpsons movie came out, Slurpee sold The Squishy. I mean, 7-Eleven sold The Squishy. And it was, it was made by accident. It was made by a Dairy Queen worker. He is... Uh, freezer stopped working, so he threw a bunch of soda bottles into his freezer. And then when he got them out, they had ice in them, and people really loved it. And they're like, "Oh, what do you call this?" He called, said, "I call it the icy," and that's how icy started. Wow! I used but, to love going to Walmart and getting an icy. Yeah, an icy. Yeah. Icy's yeah. still around. They're now headquartered here. I might go get one today. Yeah, that had a little dog on it. Yeah, you can get it. No, oh, I love that logo. You can yeah. get it at. Uh, I think you can get them at Burger Is it King. A dog or a polar bear? Yeah, it's a polar bear. Yeah, it could be a bit. <laughs> yeah, it might have to go. <laughs> but then when 7-Eleven bought the rights from him, they changed it to Slurpee, the name, the Slurpee. Mm. Take Harper and go get an icy today. Yeah. I think it might happen. You go Coke I like icy? the I the like kind. the Coke, yeah. Really? I go Cherry. Oh, Cherry's man. good, too, though. Cherry will mess up your whole day, though, and your whole mouth is red. I'm prepared for that. <laughs> <laughs> I think ahead. I think, who am I meeting today? Yeah. Am I going to be comfortable with them knowing what's going on? And today's a day where you'd be fine. Yeah. I'm probably not going to talk anymore today. Counterbalance the tea. Yeah. Go something hot, get something yeah. almost frozen. Yeah. I went high to old money here. So I'm going to go new lotto money. I see. <laughs> Good money. The world's largest convenience store, Bucky's in New Brunswick, Texas. Mm. 120 gas pumps, 83 bathroom stalls. A thousand parking spaces. Oh my God. I need to go see that one. Yeah. 31 cash rushers. Um, Parked right by the bathroom. Got in and out. <laughs> pay at the pump is a relatively new thing. Um, yeah, I remember not doing that. My mom still does it. Yeah. She didn't know how to do it, so she'll just go in and pay. She didn't care. She gets gas like three times a year. Um, but they thought that would cut out all the buying, all the stuff. Because if people weren't going in anymore, you know, it was really cut down. But mm-hmm. it actually had the opposite effect because now the lines weren't as long for everybody in and having to pay gas. So the people who were really into buying stuff just made a day of it and oh. it actually picked up sales. What would you mm-hmm. think about if almost it was like a sonic thing where you pump your gas and then you could order stuff at the gas pump and they'd bring it out to you on roller skates? Uh, yeah, it'd have to be quick. Yeah. It'd have to be quick. It'd be before you were done pumping gas. I think, but I think like, oh, if you pressed it. Let's say you put the gas in, then you're like, well, yeah, bring me out a Diet Coke and, you know, some gum. And then it just tack it onto that gas bill and they just bring it out to you. If it were fast, I'd be into it. If it was fast, I'd be into it. I, the thing with Sonic, though, you're looking at a menu. So you would have to know exactly what you want. Well, they would have a whole menu up. They'd have I think like a gas. 
Yeah. If, if they could bring me a jug to use the bathroom in, yeah. that would be, that would, that would, I would, like if they had food, like good food, like yeah. if it was a place like that, yeah. you'd be like, hey, I want to, I'll take a number one. Yeah. Yeah. What I'm saying is McDonald's should start selling gas. Yeah. Have a gas pump. I wish they had some mom and pop places inside like a Love's where you could go get a hamburger, like a good hamburger. It's always like, I mean, I'm not a McDonald's fan. It's, it's McDonald's that. and Subway. Subway, maybe a Hardee's once Arby's in a while. Every now and then. Yeah. I wish they had some mom and pop gas station. What's uh, uh <clears throat> what's the age that you think you start filling the tank up every time? What Is do you mean? It, you know, like when you're when you first drive, you're never filling the tank up. But then you do hit an age. I guess it's, you've got to have like a real job. Yeah, you got to have some money. But then you start filling it up every time. Probably like mid. I mean, right, do you fill it up every time? Thirty. I fill it up every time. Yeah, yeah. Do you dusty? Yeah. yeah. Well, sometimes I get if I'm if I'm like I get impatient. Yes. Then I just stop it before you know. And that's enough. Yeah. Yeah. Just to get where I'm going. <laughs> yes. Enough. <laughs> enough. You just grab I'm that saying. pump and you go, enough. <laughs> enough. <laughs> so uh, I think we talked about a previous episode with all these electric cars starting. Convenience stores are actually going down. There's fewer now already than there used to be. And they think they'll eventually either fade away or they'll have to change. So what they're talking about doing is maybe one thing is, I guess most people who have electric cars, they have a level one charger. They're talking about installing level three chargers, which can charge your car so much faster that it's almost like pumping gas, f- filling your car up with gas. So that's one thing that they're talking about. If they about. did that, that would help people go inside. Yeah. Yeah. Because now it takes a long time to charge a car, right? Yeah. They're gonna have to do they're gonna have to do what th- these movie theaters are doing. Which is they're gonna have to turn it into more of an experience. Yep. Mm-hmm. For people, there's gonna be a lot more Bucky's, a lot more yep. places trying to do that. Which will be fun. Yeah, which will be great. I mean, I'm excited about what's to come. <laughs> In California, Tesla has already opened a charging hub where you come. There's a lounge, espresso bar, free Wi-Fi. Mm-hmm. So that's kind of what you're thinking. Yeah, Just- yeah. Culturally, a little different than what I'm. We want some where I'll be. more fun. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we want more of a Bucky's. Yeah. But I'm sure that place would like some hot tea and some yeah. free yeah. free Wi-Fi. <laughs> so convenience stores will either go away or they're just gonna have to totally change the way they do things. And we've talked about Harper pumping gas and you know, stuff like that. I know she's already been with you to pump gas before. Yeah. But our our daughters, I mean, they that's 15, 16 years from now. Who knows? I know. It's going to be a wild world out here. Your daughter's definitely going to pump gas. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I don't, your, your, your daughter's going to have gallons ca- of gas in her crib. Yeah. yeah. We're, we're gas compound. for life out here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We're gas for life. Yeah. I think you're still be, yeah, you're, uh, she'll definitely live in a world, and so will Harper, where there is no gas station. I mean, when she gets older. Yeah. We're mad think, Max. I don't know, man. Here. I mean, it's, you know, I think it'll be like DVDs. You well, know, California. Around. You'll know what yeah. they are, but you might not buy them. Yeah. California said by 2035, selling all electric cars. I'm more into DVDs than ever. So, <laughs> yeah. I hope they have like a McKay's gas station. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, so you can go get gas for cheap. Yeah. yeah. I could used see. Gas. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Used gas. Yeah. <laughs> they got, yeah. I could see using DVDs. Yeah. It's like when you play, I don't play video games a lot, but we have an, one on the bus. Everything's like, just to play the game now, it's like, you get a, it's a whole thing. Mm-hmm. It's all these, you know, there's all this extra stuff they're adding. You're like, I just want to go, I want to play. I know. Right. In movies and everything, you're like, you do go, if I put this DVD in, it's playing. It's right yeah. there. It's not going to be a thing. Yeah. I'm into it. Log in. And- yeah. I hate video game with, with like a story. I don't play a lot of games either, but if you're like, there's a story, I'm like, skip, 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 skip. I don't, I don't need to know the story. Yeah. Well, some games you do. Not for me. <laughs> I, don't, I don't need to know it either. I'm like, where are they hiding the gun? And, you know, where's the car I can see? I watched uh, The Core last night. The Core? Oh my gosh. I haven't seen that movie forever. Where they go to the center of the earth? It's where they go yeah. to the core. I remember that movie. Pretty fun. Yeah, I liked it. Dusty? All I remember about the core. <laughs> no, I would be yeah. interested in it though. Yeah, it's the guy they hired. A you hack. like science fiction? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Heavy on the fiction. Yeah, yeah. 
It's the guy they hire to hack the internet. Yeah. And he goes, I'm going to need a lot of Hot Pockets. Yeah. <laughs> I remember that line yeah, yeah. pretty good. I think he asked for money. He asked, well, that's one of his requests. I'm going to need unlimited money. Is so, that what he said? Well, they go, can you hack the internet yeah. with unlimited resources? And he's like, I'm going to need a lot of Hot Pockets. But I mean, like, uh, I'd want to I'd wanna get, like, is he going to get paid to? He gets paid, I think. You think so? Well, he was also uh, doing a bunch of illegal stuff, and they arrest him, and this is like, I'll do this. I'll hack the internet for you. If I remember correctly. It's been a while since I've seen it. Yeah, in that fresh. movie, they they make it to the center of the earth. Yeah. They get down there. It's real hot. Oh, it's real hot down there. <laughs> yeah. Well, they get out at one point, which is kind of funny. Like, they you, they get to the middle, and then they hit a point where they're like, I guess we got to get out of our ship. And you're like, well, I don't think we could. <laughs> that doesn't make sense. Did you see where NASA crashed a spacecraft into an asteroid? Did oh, they really? man. Yeah. To see if they can make it bounce a different direction. So if one ever came toward Earth, they could uh, divert it. How'd oh. it go? <laughs> they said it'll be a while before they know for sure if it changed course, I think. How would you convenient. not know right away? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. Well, I don't know. I don't I think guess it's it must have been very slight. Yeah. It's not like it goes opposite direction like yeah, a pinball. Yeah. <laughs> boing. <laughs> I, Is there I'd video? like to hear a boing. Is yeah. there video footage of the crash? There's animation. Not. Oh, animation. Yeah. So no, no real footage. I, don't, yeah. I, I haven't seen. <laughs> oh, good. Real footage, but yeah, they got a drawing of it. So. Guy had a lot. They got of hot drawing, pockets. and you go, "Is it going to work?" You're like, "We won't know for quite a while." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> When's the last time you stopped at a gas station? They gave you a key. So they go to the bathroom. Uh, yeah, not that long ago. Yeah, I will say within the year. There's one What's on the way to, to McMinnville. Me? When I, when I go out there. Those but. are probably not convenient. So those are gas stations, right? Those are yeah. straight up Chevrons. Yeah. This one's like a little bit of a grocery store in Watertown. Okay. Yeah. It's a good spot. I like yeah. how, How'd you say that? Watertown. Uh, Watertown? I thought Water. it was Waterton. Watertown. No, it's Watertown, but you, you put a little Wa- R in there. Water. Water. Watertown. Word. Water. Yeah. Word to return. Right. <clears throat> is that basically it? Yeah. yeah. I'll show this video. Uh, this is Lincoln. So... Uh, they were all the guys that go on the road with me, uh, which has been you guys, everybody I've started with, I've been around, I've known for 20 years and they very nicely got me, uh, a hiking stick with a rain check tour on it. And then they got a poster with everybody's or a picture with everybody's face on it. That's cool. It was very cool. They forgot Gary Veter, Julian forgot Gary Veter. So then they wrote (laughs) another letter. Like it was but it was very sweet. It's like a perfect gift. <clears throat> we forgot to put the hiking stick on the uh, on the bus, so <laughs> they had to get it through the airport. And so Veter and Julian, two perfect people to try to do this, but they they were like, "Well, just have a fake limp." So I mean, just <laughs> he walked through the, the airport, <laughs> and that's how they got the stick home. It was just him acting. <laughs> Julian acting like, oh man. He had to pretend it was a medical device. He had for him. to pretend it was a medical device. Wow. And he had, I mean, that's worse than a guitar. It's just huge <laughs> and doesn't move. What did he do with it on the plane? I don't know. Julian figures stuff out. <laughs> he figures stuff out. Uh, all right. Sorry about my voice. We love you always. Uh, we got, I got, I'm about to announce it. The 2023 dates coming up. I also have big dates uh, two weeks. Fargo, North Dakota, Casper, Wyoming. I'm coming out there. Uh, I'm blanking. Cedar Rapids. Bunch of stuff. And this weekend, Greg Warren. This weekend. Greg Warren special. I'm directing it, producing it with 800 Pound Gorilla. Lexington Comedy Club, Comedy Off Broadway, great comedy club. Great comedy club. <clears throat> Greg's very, very funny. Y'all saw him on the podcast. Yeah. Come out to that. Saturday night, we're taping the show. He's there all weekend. Uh, so come to any of them. But Saturday, we are taping it. Uh, we appreciate everybody that will come. It's going to be, I'm very excited. We're almost done with Mike Vecchione's special, so we're no more about that, but it looks great. Uh, so uh, yeah, come out to Greg's this weekend. Uh, it's Thursday. I'm with Angela Johnson in Memphis. And then uh, Saturday, I'm with Angela here in town at the Ryman Auditorium where she is taping her special. Oh, so I'm going to that. be open to her for yeah. that. And she's doing two shows at the Ryman. That'll be fun. And then October 22nd, I'm recording my Dry Bar special All in right. Provo, Utah. 
Provo, Utah. Yeah. October 22nd. Yep. Oh, that's awesome. Everybody go check that out. Yeah. Yeah. October 22nd. Yeah. This weekend, tonight, I'm in Texas. I'm in Texas all weekend. Houston tonight at the Secret Group. Then Bryan, Texas. And then all weekend in Dallas at Hyenas Comedy Club, which I've never been to. I'm excited. And then next weekend, the Stress Factory in Bridgeport, Connecticut, where I've never been. It's so, a great club. Yeah, yeah it's fun. I got a lot of great, Stress Factory is a... That's a big one. I've never done us. either of them, so I mean, I'm pumped yeah, about it. Yeah. Um, and then I got a bunch of dates coming up. Chicago, Milwaukee, Davenport, Iowa. Come see me. Uh, I want to say, I, since the last time we've done a podcast, I was in Greenville, South Carolina at the Comedy Zone. I had a great time. A lot of Nate Land fans came out. I appreciate that. Those shows were really hot. I had a good run of Comedy Zones. Jacksonville, Greensboro, Greenville, all hot. And this weekend, I'll be at the Funny Bone in Dayton, Ohio, September 30th, October 1st. And then October 4th, I'm back at Zanies in Nashville. All right. That's um, good. Yeah. All right. We love you. See you next time. Thank you. Bye. Nate Land is produced by Nate Land Productions and by me, Nate Bargetzi, and my wife, Laura, on the All Things Comedy Network. Recording and editing for the show is done by Genovations Media. Thanks for tuning in. Be sure to catch us next week on the Nate Land Podcast.